It's an obvious statement. All right. I'll come in and hang out with you guys for an hour before little T and I head to the charter. That'll make my day. Travel sports. Total sports. Total sports travel.com. Total sports travel.com. Don't wear deodorant tomorrow. Why? Because you want all that flight with people. Let, be yeah. known, man. It's bad luck. No, I'm going to lead cheers on the plane. I'm, I'm sure you are. Just no, sing the Crimson. song that Steve Martin Why? did. What was, what was the song Steve Martin uh, sang with John Candy? Three coins in a fountain. <laughs> if Little T does not have video of Dunaway leading cheers, uh, I'm going to I be get on sorely there? disappointed. I don't give nothing. No, <laughs> I give I give a yeah. If you wear a script A wife beater, Alabama wins this whole thing <laughs> on the flight. Uh, All right, that's the show today. We're back with you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Central Time. Until next time, God bless you and God bless America. Follow Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The social media team at Next Round Live will share the latest interviews and videos from UAB, Alabama, Auburn, and campuses all over the college landscape. You'll also get the latest highlights and news from the Next Round Live daily show. Jim, Lance, and Ryan will share their thoughts. And remember, you can always see the old shows on the Next Round Live YouTube channel. Subscribe, like, and don't forget to comment. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss a thing. It's Next Round Live on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You've been wearing that thin, raggedy t-shirt for years now, and people cannot stop whispering and staring in your vicinity. We've all been there. Luckily, there's a solution to your lack of fashion and social cues. At nextround.store, they have plenty of options when it comes to a variety of shirts and hats. Once you start putting that next round gear on, be prepared to make new lifelong friends and hundreds of unforgettable conversations. Hope you like random high fives in the street, because that's what you're getting after visiting nextround.store. Every day, someone is ridiculed and mocked for the clothing they chose to wear. It's a harsh reality we all must face. But you have the chance to change all of that with one visit to nextround.store. For just a few minutes of browsing, you will observe so many clothing options, from hats to hoodies to t-shirts. Please, for yourself or someone you love, go to nextround.store and embrace the warmth of true attire. Maybe you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, X, LinkedIn, or TikTok while we're changing the game yet again. Tyler's Telegrams has been developed exclusively for you. Hi, this is the lovable boy you know as Tyler the Intern. I'm a businessman now. I will come directly to your door and tell you every time a new piece of TNR content drops. For the low, low price of $740,000, you can be notified by me, one of the biggest stars of the next round, about that thing you missed. Sure, the rest of those social media services are free, but so is radio, and we all know how well that's trending. Tyler's Telegrams is currently operating exclusively in Bibb County. Other social media platforms are available everywhere. It's time to pull the trigger on the Next Round merch that you've been eyeing. We know there's a lot to choose from at nextround.store, so here's a few of our favorite picks. If you want to match LT and Brown, go with a TNR logo hoodie and throw in one of Dunaway's favorite hats. Any of them will do. The backrooms go to is the classic logo t-shirt, while my personal favorite is the light blue TNR crew neck. All of these items can be found at nextround.store and are EG approved. Rest assured, your order will be packed with lots of love from us here at the next round. Head over to nextround.store to start filling up your cart. The Double Down Media Podcast family is live and full of content for all ages. The Mystery Fifth Hour gives the next round host a chance to talk about everything but sports. Pour a glass of Bama and Bourbon, our weekly college football conversation, while sipping on some of the most interesting pours in the bourbon world. And in our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, LT takes off the gloves for in-depth conversations with stars like Taylor Hicks, presented by Redmont Vodka. Find these podcasts and more by searching The Next Round on Apple, Spotify, and on our website, nextroundlive.com. Just because you've quit going to the gym, it doesn't mean that you have to quit gym altogether. Dunaway, that is. With our Next Round podcasts open 24-7, 365, you can access gym anytime you'd like. While you may have done away with your treadmill routine, our version of Dunaway is standing by ready to get you back to your absolute best. Find all that lovely Jimmy D-led content on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and in the podcast section of nextroundlive.com. This message is sponsored by Jimmy Crypto Inc. and Jimmy Crypto for President. Take the next round anywhere you go with official next round gear. Buy yours today at nextround.store. Want more of the show? Download the app or visit nextroundlive.com for the latest podcast, The Mystery Fifth Hour, our Not For All Ages podcast, The Last Call, and the entire Double Down Media podcast family. All at nextroundlive.com and on the Next Round app. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, 
Ryan Brown and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. I'm here for a good time, but not a long time today, Rockstar. First hour of the show, and then I'll turn it over to these guys as I head out to Phoenix. Open practice today starts at 11 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, this one has got you confused, doesn't 1 it? 1 o'clock Central time, but in Phoenix, they're uh, Mountain Standard Time this time of year, but it's the same time as P- Pacific time right now, so they don't change the clocks when the time changes in Arizona. Yeah, that's 7 a.m., just, just yeah. flipped, that's and right. uh, I guess you'll be going to In-N-Out Burger because your last experience there was a pleasant one in Phoenix, right? Oh, it was a pleasant one in Phoenix. Uh, Maggie and I had a great trip. Um but I also went to In-N-Out Burger before Alabama played Michigan, and that was not a pleasant trip in Pasadena. I thought it was good. The food was good. The results were not. <laughs> oh. So I will, oh. not have, I will not have In-N-Out Burger until. That was a hell of a game, though. Would you take overtime not knowing the outcome right now? If yes. you tell me Alabama goes to overtime with yes. UConn, and it's five minutes to decide whether they go yes, to the national. You take I, that in a heartbeat. I would take five minutes to decide the national championship right now. Yes. Okay. I've got, I've got a little hoops and four downs. Can we do four downs before you get out? If you want to, yes, we can. Wait, is that okay with Uh-oh. you? Give a rip. About nothing. If Taylor, if Taylor does not send us videos and I confuse you for Roll Tide <laughs> Willie on this plane, you, 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 I am going to be pissed. You're going to think this is crazy. This is starting to remind me just from people I'm talking talking to of 2009 when we went to Newport. And I know that sounds insane because Alabama football is here. Alabama basketball is wherever you want to put it. But I'm just talking about the excitement amongst Alabama fans. And you remember everybody scrambling around, figuring out how they were going to get out to L.A. and Pasadena for that 2009 national championship matchup between Texas and Alabama. You know, anytime you have a first for a program that goes back so far, this is a massive deal, and I don't know where you guys would stack it in, in Alabama historic sports uh, it's moments. A, it's an interesting question. It, I think it's got to be top five. I think the other four, probably football, you know, the hiring of Nick Saban, first national champion, however you want to do it, this has got to find its way into the top five. Just going to the Final Four? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned it on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Uh, I was helping them kill a little time, and I said, hey, if, if they win the game tonight to punch a ticket to the Final Four, they're going to look back on this game – like they did that 1920 Rose Bowl win, the first team from the South to go win at the Rose Bowl that sort of launched Alabama into being a blue blood in college football. And now Alabama's at the Final Four, and if they could, you know, start punching that ticket every now and then, they'll look back at the game against Clemson and go, that's, that's when those boys rode the train to Los Angeles and became a blue blood in basketball. Yeah, the universal question has always been, is it harder to build it or maintain it? He's built it. Can you maintain it at this level? Right. Because you, you look around at yeah. different programs like Tom Izzo has been able to maintain, but you know what? He's got one national championship. I mean, you see, and that was, I, yeah. that was a quarter of a century He's ago. been able to maintain them as a really good program. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I would call them an elite program. Would you? I, I would say if I'm a Michigan State fan, I'm like, I mean, they're really Damn, good. Like what happened? Yeah. Like you, you started off so strong in this last 25 years. We haven't won a national championship. Yeah. I, I, the old tougher to build, tougher to maintain. Like I can play both sides of that now because I would say tougher to maintain because you can lose a roster in a hurry, but it can also be easier to build that way. Right. So I might say tougher to maintain. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's easy to build a roster in college basketball right now. Just look at this Alabama team. I mean, this team is in the Final Four because of guys they didn't sign out of high school. Mark Sears, Aaron Estrada. I mean, guys that transferred in. Without those guys, they are not in this Final Four. Yeah, so who would you take? said the four of the starting lineup was at Dodge City Junior College, yeah. Ohio, Hofstra, and North Dakota yeah, State. Grant Nelson. I mean, it's a long And list. when you get a yeah. chance, you're bored at work today on a Friday, pull NC State's roster, their top seven producers, and look where they were the last couple so of DJ years. So DJ Burns is not homegrown. No, I have not paid attention. Not. So if I ask you, though, Alabama at its best last year or Alabama at its best this year, who would you take last year? Uh, Alabama at its best last year by 11. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they That's were what's a, crazy about basketball. They were a dominant team last year, and – there are times I've watched Alabama, like the home game against Texas A&M, that turned out to be an NCAA tournament team. Alabama beat them by 25 at home, yeah. never close. Um, there are times I've watched them be dominant, 
Yeah, but That's, but nothing like last year, I don't think. Oh, there there is a point in not every game. You wish it was every game, but there's a point in the game when this team gets going, um, where they can go bang, 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 and all of a sudden you were you were down eight, and then all of a sudden Bama's up two. Yeah, they can be down ten, and then they're up two all of a sudden. So you know this team when they get eight ten down there's that potential they're going to come back on you because they are so good. They do it all the time. Brody says the Locked On UConn podcast referred to Mark Sears as, quote, their little munchkin guard that Castle was going to, quote, put him in his shirt pocket. Mark Uh, Sears faced some pretty good guards this year, and as we told you yesterday, um, he scored single digits one time when he got hurt. He has scored less than 23 times since uh, conference play started. Cut five, Rockstar. And while we while we got the maybe the folks from the Locked On UConn podcast listening to us today, if not, clip this out and send it to them. Wow. Because uh, here's uh, Charlie Henry in Statesboro, Georgia. Yesterday, he's now the head coach at Georgia Southern. He's one of the guys that brought Mark Sears uh, to Tuscaloosa back when he was on the Nate Oates coaching staff. So yes, our. Uh, in the field reporter Emily Grace McWhorter in Statesboro, Georgia yesterday talking to Coach Henry about Mark Sears. Here's what he had to say. Mark Sears. Yep. Did you expect him to be the player he is today? You know, I don't know if anyone would, would say they would have foreseen this, um, but Mark is, man, he, he's a great player. I mean, he's had... Uh, one of the best, you know, in a year of college basketball where there's been unbelievable mm-hmm. individual seasons, you can put his right up there with anyone's. Um, so, again, you know, as last year he kind of came in, and obviously we had, you know, Brandon Miller, we had Javon Quinterly, um, who's similar to Mark in some ways as far as just position and size. Uh, so he had a great year last year. Obviously, he took it to a whole nother level. Um, as the opportunity has kind of emerged where, you know, you lose Brandon and you lose JQ and now the ball's in his hands and he's full-time point guard and he's took it to another level. But, um, you know, I obviously ran the defense and uh, when I'd have to, you know, be coaching the defense, guarding him in practice, uh, I knew that, man, if he gets to his left hand, like, you're, you're in trouble. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. It, again, I think we're all... Uh, we're all excited for him to see what he's took mm-hmm. it to. Uh, I don't know if anyone could have said, like, best point guard in the country, which he probably is, um, but you're not surprised his game yeah. really took off. Best point guard in the country, some people you Make that know. argument. Yeah. yeah, I think I, you can make the argument. Uh, look, in this tournament, he's averaging 24 points per game, but it's basically what you get every single night. Yeah, he's a 20-plus guy uh, every night. I think Jimmy Dykes, it was late in the year, Jimmy Dykes in one of the uh, ESPN games said, I don't know – if I can make a definitive argument, he's the best point guard in the country. I can make a definitive argument, he's the most complete point guard in the country. And everything he does for the Alabama team and his scoring and his ball handling, uh, he's as much as he's, it's weird with Mark Sears, as much as he's scored, I don't ever watch him and think he's a selfish player. Do you guys? No, no, no. And I mean, know, he's an excellent passer. Like, he'll get up in the air on the baseline and whip those passes out and set up a three. You know, it never, it never dawned on me, Brown, until the North Carolina game and the Clemson game because especially at North Carolina game where, you know, he – they took him out. That was their goal was to put their best defender yeah. on him and prevent him he, from touching the ball. What did he score, 18? <laughs> yeah, he but he went six minutes before he scored his first bucket. Yeah. Then he went on a 14, point, 14, in 14 points, 14-minute 14 run to end the half. But then he only had two points for 17 minutes. That's because he was allowing other people to do it. He, he could have right. easily, right. like R.J. Davis did, he could have easily shot Alabama if he was not a team player, could have shot him out of that game because they were guarding him so fierce. And if he forced things up, could have shot him out of the game. And then when he started 0 for 7 against Clemson, other guys picked him up. And down the stretch, he could have easily shot them out of a game. Yep. And then he found his shot and stroked them into the final four. So I think he's very unselfish. Yeah, well, you, you bring up R.J. Davis, and that's the guy that most people would say is the best point guard in college basketball. But R.J. Davis was 4 of 20 against Alabama in a loss. So it's kind of hard to say we just saw that matchup head-to-head. Yeah. Ryland Griffin helped with defense on that one. Our show it is being brought to you by, in part by our friends at Odie's. We'll hear from – uh, both sides, UConn and Alabama from the podium. Media Day uh, kicked off yesterday out in Phoenix. Our coverage in Phoenix always brought to you by our friends at MyBookie, mybookie.ag. That's where you get your coverage. A little 
a little shift. Oh, Lance, down half a point. What does this mean? Uh, you know, it'll probably uh, bounce back and forth. And a half. I, I think it's going to stick 11 and a half, 12. Okay. Again, it's a big number, but they have not only have they just dominated this tournament, they have covered 10 consecutive NCAA tournament games. Mm. UConn has. Mm. 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 They're overdue mm. for a loss, Jimmy D. Day- you- Dayton's killing Rockstar is at Odie's this weekend. Oh, yeah, that is tonight, Rocky. Will's Dayton Rockstar. Will's uh, Dayton featuring Rockstar. Doug. Featuring Doug. Yeah. What did you say? That, <laughs> the third uh, Will? Dayton's killing Rockstar? Yeah, yeah. Something like Killen, my... Killen hadn't joined our band yet. We're trying to get him. <laughs> yeah, so this will, uh, you guys take stage a little after 8 o'clock. Is that about right? <laughs> we're going to go about 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Uh, rocking. We got two, we got, we're doing a new thing tonight. Night. We're going to do two sets, take a little short break of the first set, and we are going to do a Tom Petty set tonight. Oh, the second set will be Tom Petty. Don't back down. Oh, how about that? Don't back down is not on there. And it's also, they changed it to won't back down. <laughs> so you've <laughs> heard Rockstar here before. If you've never seen him live out in uh, in the wild, you can do that tonight. If you haven't seen Will Haver in a while, formerly of the Hump Pilots, right, Rocky? <laughs> yeah, we got, it was a big trade. <laughs> <laughs> big trade. <laughs> anyway, get into one of those two locations tonight, the original Crestline. That's where you're going to see Rocky and the guys performing. There'll be live music at the other location, the newest location in Edgewood, the corner of Oxmoor and Broadway. Ice cold beer buckets full of Bud Light. Great food from Rodney Davis. Get into one of those two locations. Great place to watch the games this weekend as well. It's Odie's Tavern. Um, and our friends, oh, hand raise, go ahead. Yes. Is there a chance you'll do Tom Petty in the lounge today? No, we had a special one today. Oh, okay. Special occasion today. All right. Yeah, it better Ooh. not be Zach Bryan because I won't be here to oh, see that him. would be awesome. I told the Zach you're Bryan not, story you're last not night. Be here today for the lounge? <laughs> he is not. He's leaving oh, at 10. Because I heard what, what he... He's leaving on an airplane like John Denver once said. I don't know if you heard oh, wow. this. Did we say this <laughs> oh, out loud? <laughs> but two years ago, our buddy Michael Sellers came to us and Todd Coder, and they said, we've got this guy that... We want to put him in studio with you, Zach Bryan. And I asked these guys, I don't know anything about country music. What do you guys know? I remember my quote exactly. I was like, um, because he was coming to Avondale. Yep. And I I heard what he got paid last night at Avondale, which, I mean, absolute. I mean, how this guy's grown in two years is insane. Yeah, but he already had a huge following from his time in the military by going up behind his barracks and playing on YouTube. But I had not heard of him at the time. And he said, you listen to country music. You ever heard of Zach Bryan? I was like, I know Luke Bryan. I know Zach Brown. I do not know uh, Zach uh, Brown. That's literally what he said. Are you sure he doesn't mean Luke Brian or Zach oh, Brown? I remember that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and the, and Lance is like, no, it's a guy named Zach Brian. It's a hybrid. Right. Yeah, I don't know. And who I this remember is. Lance saying, Lance saying, uh, to, sending it back to Michael saying, oh, we'll promote the show, but we don't want him on the air. Yeah, yeah that's 100%. <laughs> what he and said. I remember Michael saying, I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't know who this So is. I don't think anybody knew, but the couple I was with last night, uh, really good people, and they, they were you know talking a lot of country music, and they were floored that we didn't have him in. I was like, well, hell, nobody well, knew who I was. mean, that's easy hindsight on their part. Yeah. They don't have to produce a show every day. Yeah, but it, but it was two months later. I was at, a, at a, a party with our supper club, and the kids in the pool who are all yeah. seniors in high school or freshmen or sophomores in college, they started singing, and I was like, that's a good song. And then they played another song. I was like, I like, so I downloaded it and didn't dawn on me until later that we had just turned this guy down. This is where we get Jimmy Curran. Oh, I this, love this. Is Zach you Bryan. learn from the uh, supper club kids, don't you? <laughs> I do. I do. I do. I do love me some Zach Bryan. Some more. It's all I've listened to since we turned him down. He could have come in studio. Yep. Just like Rockstar will do this afternoon. And we could have been. It, we could have been the show that. Yep. You could have been, been his best, best friend, friend, man. We could, we could have been on the bus yeah. when he was in Birmingham now for two in, nights. In hindsight, we would no longer have ownership of that uh, that content. So, anyway, so it would really be doing us no good right now. But s- same couple last night has offered up another. Uh, musician that I'll talk to you guys about in break. I, see if, if I you say guys. We just say, yes, we just say yes blindly. Yeah. See okay. what happens. Okay, we just go yes from now on. He's he's all political, but like <laughs> <you know. laughs> that's all he sings about is yeah. politics. Yeah. Hey, that that one guy a year ago, North of Richmond guy, blew up for he did. for a minute. Hey, I'll tell you this. No, he's at uh, Rock the South. He's yeah. one of their, their headliners. Oh, I heard uh, what some of these guys are getting now for Rock the South. Man, I grew up too. Musicians are making a lot of money. Can you yeah. disclose what Zach Bryan got at uh, Avondale? Um. I, I don't know if it was even the first time, but I think it was around 25K. Hmm. So you, would you book him for 25000 right now? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he was coming to Birmingham for one night, and they had to sell a second show. Yeah. They sold yep. out two nights. I know. The I, tickets I, were going for four fifty a pop. Tr- trust me, I'm well aware of what yeah. those ticket prices yeah, were. Absolutely. Um, the show also being brought to you by our friends at Bandwagon. I get asked all the time. Nate Oates wears this, this uh, really cool white... Um, jacket pullover right quarter zip like yeah. hoodies jacket thing uh-huh. really sharp yeah. jacket and it is i've seen it available nowhere right 
until last night, Bandwagon has Yeah, that. it says it right here. Bandwagon is your go-to for the quarter zip hoodie jacket looking things. Yeah. That's right here in the coverage. That everyone gym. wants from Nate Oates. <laughs> everyone wants from Nate Oates. And I, I'm, I'm waiting for Reed to bring mine in here today. I was hoping Bandwagon had sent one up here for me to yeah. wear on the that trip. That didn't happen? No. It, it hasn't yet. Well, you I, haven't I, left I figured yet. that's my parting gift coming up here before 10 o'clock. we got 45 minutes. Just, you, you, you're just getting it all, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, uh, it is all-star season. Bandwagon wants to help your team look the best and play the best whether you're their vision for your team as uniforms or you've got the vision or you're starting from scratch bandwagon can help your team hit the field and style their amazing staff walks alongside you throughout the design creation the sizing and more it's not just uniforms bandwagon can create any custom apparel whether your business is looking for their newest polo or your all-star moms won't matching tank tops check out their website bandwagonsports.com for all your custom apparel needs Next round, jump on the bandwagon, bandwagonsports.com. You're home for those quarter zip hoodie looking jacket things. Yeah, hey, Rockstar, queue up six and get, then give me one. Uh, but while he's doing that, uh, Right Cell, open to the media, says he's playing. Uh, he says it, which is yeah. pretty uh, significant, I would say. I don't, I don't think, I, I do think the further away you get from these concussions, and obviously it's a lot more delicate, you know, year by year, it seems like, and how they monitor these things. But now we're talking about two weeks out. And if he feels like he's 100 percent, you know, if you're I, I don't I don't know how you can really deny it. He missed two weeks last time. You don't have four any games, yep. four games, two weeks last time. This is his second one this year. It came from an elbow when he was contesting up in Spokane. So he's missed three games, basically. Um, you know, six minutes left in the first half and then the two yeah. games in L.A. Uh, but that would allow them. To go four shooting guards and then either Nelson or or Stevenson out on the perimeter as well, and basically have five shooters on the floor, which everyone says is maybe the key to beating. UConn. It's what Nate Oates has always wanted uh, this season is the four guard lineup with Nelson playing the five again, a little bit out of position for him, but he's he's managed it. Um, but the thing is, Nelson in that situation can really stretch cling and bring him out yep. on the perimeter. Yep. Uh, a lot of backdoor cuts, a lot of things you can do with that. Again, I am fascinated to see, and in Nate you trust when it comes to offense, how they're going to attack this UConn defense. But, you know, now you've got some guys that have a little bit more confidence in their offensive game with rights allowed. I mean, I, I would have to think Jaron Stevenson is ultra confident coming into this game the way he just played against Clemson. Should still be in high school. Should be a That's senior crazy, in high school isn't it? in Chapel Hill, North Carolina was the player of the game and got to put Alabama out to the Final Four bracket. UConn, we talked all yesterday about their struggles just to get there. Daniel T. Hurley, I don't know his middle initial, I'm kidding. I'll Dan Hurley turd. is uh, the head coach. Turd. <laughs> oh, turd Hurley. That's why I went T. Uh, <laughs> Dan Hurley on the podium, hat turned around backwards, gets asked a very simple question everyone wanted to know. Hey, tell me about your travel. Dan, how was your flight? It was not, you know what, it, it was nice. Uh, <laughs> you know what, it's like, uh, you know, I, I, you know, <laughs> had a lot of thoughts, because you know, I've had a lot of time <laughs> uh, to think uh, just in a stationary uh, situation. But, um, you know, it's like, I think what goes through your mind once you're done, you know, kind of complaining and cursing and muttering and trying to, you know, you just start saying to yourself, uh, you know, like you don't really deserve to show entitlement. Um, it's such an honor to get a chance to, and a once in a lifetime experience to go play in a Final Four, coach in a Final Four, that, um, you know, it's just, um, you know, once kind of that edge wore off, you start, you know, lucky to be here. We're lucky to get an opportunity to come play in the Final Four. Um, and then who doesn't deal with problems with the airlines? <laughs> I mean, people deal with it during the holidays, and it's just uh, it's something that you, you know, just got to get through. But it sucked. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't like it, him. It sucked. Um, I don't <laughs> to, think to a recap. lot of people like Musselman, but if you're Arkansas, why would you not offer him $10 million a year? Who, Dan Hurley? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I would. I, I wouldn't leave UConn for Arkansas if I were him. Unless, I wouldn't either. Unless it's just about money. But to LT's point. Yeah, why not? I, I would make him the highest paid guy in college. I can basketball. obviously coach. And, and, and he might want another challenge. You, you just yeah. never know. I don't think he would leave UConn either, especially if he closes the deal, which a lot of people expect him to do so, and you've won back-to-back -back national championships. You can do everything there. I would assume in the Big East they pay him $5 million. Million? 
Is that about right? Yeah, oh, I, I bet he's making more. Than I'll I don't know. See. That's see. a lot of money. Uh, Rockstar, could you log in the official minutes of today's next round that what I'm about to say is not meant as a criticism for Dunaway setting up that soundbite? Is 9 that 20 a.m.? Got it logged. It's logged. I still don't understand why people are making such a big deal about this. Yeah. It, the, the bigger part of the story is how inept the NCAA is about getting their teams to their big events. That's yeah. the bigger part of the story. Well, I, I don't think people think it's going to impact tomorrow night's game. I would not think so. I, I think people are wanting to get the reaction of the defending national champs and the overall favorites. They had travel issues and nobody else did. I think people wanted to hear his soundbite to that. And then they wanted to hear this guy, Nate Oates's reaction, his funny comeback to UConn having travel problems. And here is Nate Oates, who always isn't afraid to take a little jab about a good night's sleep he had. Not quite sure what happened with the plane. I, um, it wasn't me. I didn't send anybody over there to, uh, to mess with the uh, mechanics. I'm sure he's uh, conjured that up in his head already. But uh, he, uh, I did get a good night's sleep last night, so it's nice. Uh, yeah, Nate, how, how many hours of sleep did you get? I got a solid seven to eight hours in a bed, not, they, a, not, not on a plane. They got in at 3.13. That's it's not, not fine. I, I am glad I'm not the ops person for the University of Connecticut basketball team during this trip, that's for sure. I am we known on this. Because so. he knows how the Hurleys are. He's oh, like, oh, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad I'm not the ops person. I, I am surprised this is really the top storyline coming into this matchup. They were talking about it yesterday on McAfee, uh, and it was hilarious. He goes, uh, McAfee's like, I could not believe this is happening. If this had happened to when we were playing with the Indianapolis Colts, it would have been mind mind blowing. Even if it was, even if it was the Sunday travel for the following Sunday Super Bowl, it would have been mind blowing. May, may I suggest to you why it doesn't happen with the Colts? Because the Colts uh, are booking their own travel. They're not relying on an institution that is farming it out to the lowest bidder so that they can make a quick buck, which is what the NCAA does with this deal. Which is why they have issues. Which is why I mean, it gets magnified because of the Final Four. But I re I'll rewind everything back to the week of the first round when Andy Kennedy is on this very show. His team tips on Thursday. It is Tuesday. Or what, were they playing Friday? Which one did they play? Thursday or Friday? Friday, I think. They played on Friday. Yeah, Friday. It is Tuesday, and he literally says on this show, whenever we get out there, we still don't know our flight time. Yeah, yeah. I'm, just, Tuesday. I'm just surprised that it's not more about UConn going for the first back-to-back -back since 2007, Alabama's first Final Four. Oh, they're, they're talking about that. I mean, these are 50-minute media sessions. Yeah. I just, we just pulled No, but I mean, that's two I'm, sound I'm, I'm not just, talk, I'm not just talking about us. I'm talking yeah. about, as you said, McAfee. Yeah. Like, when you look around, I mean, we've got four TVs going right now. I mean, when they go to this matchup, that's the first thing they talk about is yeah. the mechanical issues. Because it doesn't happen often. It is so unique. Uh, Eric Musselman to USC. Happens more than Bama going to the Final Four. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, now it's one each. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, tied. Uh, show brought to you by Hemphill. And then a quick thought on Eric Musselman leaving the SEC for a Southern California. Tell us about Hemphill. Yeah, 205-229-2090. Call our friends at Hemphill Services. Whether you experience plumbing, heating, or cooling issues in your home or business, they are ready to serve you. Call Adam, Chad, Andrew, the guys at Hemphill Services, 205-229-2090. Hard to stop a train or Hemphill Services. Com. This will probably come up in the course of this conversation, so I'll just close the loop on this. Dan Hurley, six-year, $32 million contract after last year. So what's that, five and a half million a year, roughly? Wow. Yeah, but if you offer to double it. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, now I would imagine if they win this whole thing this weekend, that probably gets torn up and started over. But UConn's got a limit. I mean, oh, UConn, yeah. that's a great program. Well, and here's another but thing. they got a limit. If, if I'm Arkansas, not only do I go after Hurley and offer him double his salary, but I also say... You show me what your collective's got, and we'll show you what yeah, we exactly. got. Yeah, exactly. And little, our little, priority isn't necessarily yeah. football. Take a look it's at the SEC basketball. collective. Yeah. That's what they yeah. And by like, the way, yeah. we do have a football program that's going to keep making that's money right. for the foreseeable future. Yeah. You guys do not. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I I know it sounds stupid for him to leave UConn, but you got to make that call. Oh, yeah. I 100% make the call. Yeah. Eric Musselman's the USC. It's the least most interesting part of the story <laughs> to me. Yeah. Yeah. So hope you, man. So I follow a lot of different USC stuff on, on social media. And just some of the videos that he's already thrown out there. Yeah. Like, it it's is. almost, Im I don't want to call it embarrassing, but. He is hokey. I said that in my reaction video yesterday. He was hokey when he did the, the track yep. in the block lineup before the season. Yeah, finished the season. Rolled out the red carpet for our guy, USC men basketball. 
Uh, so he is there in L.A. now. The more interesting part to me, I assume it is with you, is who the next coach oh, is going to be at Arkansas. Yep. Instantly the name that comes out is one of your favorite coaches of all time who's at Ole Miss now. He's well, the leading candidate, it appears. Yeah, and if you're Chris Beard, you owe Ole Miss something, but if you get out quick enough, maybe you don't, if that I makes any know. sense. The, the, this feels – I know there's no loyalty in the world, hardly. <laughs> but, man – yeah, they hired him off the heap. I know, and I and look, I don't think Ole Miss was the only school that was going to hire Chris Beard, but they're the ones that did it. Yeah, here's here's what you got to figure out. Like Chris Beard's a lot younger than Bruce Pearl, and Bruce, look, he he went through this. He went all the way with Auburn. Like you gave me another chance, yep. and he has created a really really good program there. But if you're Chris Beard, you know, what are the chances you can you know as good as Bruce has been, he's only had one deep tournament run, and Ole Miss has become kind of what Auburn used to be. I just don't know how good Chris Beard can get Ole Miss. And if you really want the opportunity to get back to where he had Texas Tech, Arkansas is that route. So I don't know what you do here. I mean, yeah. I'm all about the loyalty, but at the same time, career-wise, Arkansas makes so much yeah. more sense. Yeah. If he missed the tournament three straight years, how loyal will Ole Miss be to him? That's, I mean, yeah, it's, that, that's how far loyalty goes well, in the world. It, it, it like does. I'm loyal to you guys. Yeah, it does. But if I'm Ole Miss, I'm like, well, why are you thinking that way? Yeah. You, we're paying you to make the tournament in those years. You so know, I, I'm not thinking that I, I know, way. No, no, I'm, I know well, what we're you're talking saying. loyalty. I know. I know where the loyalty ends. Yeah. It ends uh, when the boss wants you right. out. He gets but, you out. But you're saying that as if that's a way Chris Beard could justify in his mind, yeah. which if Chris Beard's justifying in his mind that way, to me, that's the wrong approach. I don't know. I would not blame him for taking the Arkansas job. It just does feel like a little bit like, wow, they – they hired you when a lot of people said you were unhirable. And it sounds laughable to say this out loud right now, but I think Chris Beard's a better coach than Hurley. I really do. Boy, that is hard for me to get on board with you on that one. Lance. I know, but I mean, you know, you start to look at UConn, it's almost Alabama football. And again, not to deflect or take anything away from what certain coaches have done, but Kevin Ollie won a national championship at UConn. Yeah, it's a great school. That's a great program, UConn. Everybody wins there. You're, is Texas your point. Tech a great group? <laughs> it is not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys in the – in the chat room, making it sound like Dan Hurley um, trenched his own football field back in high school on homecoming weekend. He, everyone was talking like Hurley's using this uh, engine thing to uh, motivate his team. I think he us is. Us against the world. I think he is. You uh, know, you've seen this guy. Boy, I, I think I'd go a different direction. I think he was ranting and raving in the airport. This is how they view us, the I, national I, champion. I think it's more like coming into the season. What were they preseason anyway? Because you know. lose your two top producers – I don't think they were in the top 10. Oh, I think they were in the top 10. I think they were around eight. I'll tell you right now. Preseason AP poll. After the break, can I take this one step further on the Arkansas job? Yeah. I don't want to take all your stuff. I, I think it's a leave great soon. job. Am I yeah. wrong on that? Oh, it's a fantastic job. But so is UConn in, in the Dan Hurley scenario. But, you just pay more at this one. But, one. you know, we say that, you know, there becomes a point when you're Miami or Nebraska football, you know, Arkansas basketball hasn't done anything since Nolan well, Richardson. They did say that. Back-to-back -back Elite 8s yeah, under Musselman. did get them to yeah. that. Yeah, two Elite 8s and a Sweet 16 for yeah. Muss. But the Muss bus is now uh, unloaded in Fayetteville and packed up in, out at Southern California. Show being brought to you by Greg from Pell City and Storm Restoration Roofing. Your chance for Greg to get on your roof and find out what's going on up there. Listen, it is absolutely free, no obligation, no cost. Greg gets on your roof, checks out everything to see if you got a problem up there. He also repairs damages. He does uh, storm damages, just wear and tear damages, and also replaces old roofs when they age out. He's really loved by the insurance company, so that's going to help you out with that. He's A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. Call that number on the screen, 205 Five four two three five three one five four two three five three one for storm restoration roofing or look him up on Facebook. He's Greg from Pell City. Follow Dunaway on Twitter and Instagram at Jim Dunaway. Hey, you. Days warming up, looking like spring. And in New Balance Birmingham, we've got the thing. What pops and what's fresh? Check the selects. Come together at New Balance Birmingham on Highway 280, right next to Chick-fil-A. New Balance Birmingham. We got now. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website. 
MyDryTech.com. That is MyDryTech.com. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus Prime Beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. Get ready to level up your fandom with the Autograph app. Co-founded by the legendary Tom Brady himself, this app is your one-stop shop for everything college sports. Access to all the best sports content, exciting fan challenges, and exclusive rewards. Think crazy discounts on tickets, limited edition merch, and much more. Just look at this. Autograph hooked up six lucky fans with tickets to the Arkansas-Alabama game for just $16 a ticket. That's what they call true fan pricing. Ready to join the party? Download the free Autograph app today and use the code TNR for exclusive access. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. The next round golf card is here. It's your chance to play four area golf courses for just 99 bucks. Get 18 holes plus a cart at Limestone Springs, Cross Creek, the Meadows, and the newly renovated Woodward Golf Club, presented by the Urology Centers of Alabama. That's a value of $247 for just 99 bucks. Or get the next round deluxe golf card for $119. That gets you all four courses with cart, plus an exclusive next round golf t-shirt, koozie, golf tees, and a sticker. There are no restrictions. The card is good through October of 2024. Supplies are limited, so get your golf card now at nextround.store. Back with you on the next round. Rockstar, can you pull up uh, cut eight? Um... <laughs> uh, listen, I know sometimes this is people putting out agendas, uh, trying to uh, make people look bad or this or that. But um, it happened at the Elite Eight. Um, the Alabama players go to breakout rooms. So if you're a starter, they have the open locker room. There's a podium and then there's individual breakout rooms, five of them for each of the starters. Happens for the men as well. Women's Final Four is tonight. Yesterday in the breakout room is Caitlin Clark. Is she pretty big to the women's game right now? Uh, biggest, biggest name out yep. there. Yeah. Uh, WNBA or. Uh, that's what I say on any level. Biggest yeah. name out there, yeah. Uh, Caitlin Clark draws eyeballs. Yeah. You sort of want to hear what Caitlin Clark is saying, right? I would like to. Yeah. So in her breakout if room. If I'm there. The breakout room, Women's Final Four. Just listen to the setup they've got at the Women's Final Four. In the NCAA tournament last year, and um, she hasn't shied away at all. Caden, what would you say drives you, and how would you describe your on-court mentality? Did you see that look? Yeah, we replay it again, Rockstar. Just when the I mean, horns are honking, it's ridiculous. She got, she got a little done away. Yeah, watch it. Watch the look when the horns are honking. Rubber right dimples. Caden, right what would you say drives you, and how would you describe your on-court? Look at that mentality? look. I mean, that's inside the arena, but apparently they put Caitlin Clark next to the loading dock uh, or something. I mean, just ridiculous. The, I mean, look, they, it feels like this tournament, they just give a half-ass effort yep. for this tournament. I mean, one year they, they gave them a nothing weight room. They can't even get the three-point lines right. They basically set her up in an active construction yeah. site. Let, let ESPN conference. put it on, and yeah. it would be the Taj Mahal. No, yeah. there's no doubt. I mean, and I wouldn't blame ESPN. They've actually got an investment in this thing that makes it profitable. Yeah, their most watched basketball game of the year yeah, so far has been the other night. They go tonight, 6 o'clock, uh, NC State playing South Carolina. By the way, South Carolina, the least talked about team in the in the tournament. They're 36-0. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, everybody's talking about the Beckers and and – Caitlin Clark matchup. By the way, that's the next game, the Iowa yeah. UConn yeah, game but tonight. I, I, yeah, and and I was only a two and a half point favorite in that game. Oh boy, that'd be a big upset. You know, South Carolina. I think NC State's won like seventeen straight or something, and uh, second only Final Four. But they're an eleven and a half point dog against South Carolina. I think South Carolina destroys them, 
And I got a feeling UConn's going to beat Iowa tonight, even shorthanded. Oh, that'd be Iowa would have played defense. They played five five guys, they put five girls the entire game. They don't come off the court virtually because of all their injuries. Hard to do. Hard to do. Hey, by the way, as uh, Jace points out, Birmingham will host the women's regional next year. Yeah. Boy, that'd be awesome if if she got seated in that region. I mean, it would uh, – Caitlin Clark, if she comes back. Yeah, well, she already said she's going to the WNBA. But yeah, but if she changes her mind and comes yeah. back and they got seated in that region. Oh, that'd be uh, great. God. Hey uh, – Would you go to the game? You know, I probably would. I'd yeah. like to see her play. Our show being brought to you by our friends at Legacy, uh, SwapAndDrop.com, SwapAndDrop.com. We're about to swap from the women's Final Four uh, back to college basketball for the men, but you can swap a auto loan, truck loan, boat loan, ATV loan, whatever loan you got from one financial provider over to Legacy as part of their Swap and Drop program and get the auto loan as low as 5.5% APR right now. QR codes on the screen will help you get an easy link uh, to the information you need, or you can just go to swapanddrop.com, swapanddrop.com, nine local area branches for Legacy, and they offer so many things, including engaged checking and so much more. You can check them out at those local branches, proud supporters of UAB, but right now for a short period of time left, the Swap and Drop program continues, swapanddrop.com with our friends at Legacy. Just a real quick uh, final thought on Chris Beard potentially taking the Arkansas job. If you're Ole Miss, would you turn to Bucky McMillan? Would you consider that? I would consider it. If you considered Buc- Kermit Davis, who was in the twilight of his career, after really beating you know, Michigan State. Yeah, if you're Bucky you did. I don't know if he was offered the Vanderbilt job. You go straight to Ole yeah, Miss. I don't, don't think he was offered the Vanderbilt job. I think he would have taken that job. But yes, you would take. Ole See, Miss. I'd rather have the Ole Miss job than the Vanderbilt job. I would too. I would too. And if I don't want Bucky to leave, I they, don't either. I hope he doesn't. They just stepped up uh, the payment plans yeah. at Sanford for him. They just swapped and dropped him a new contract. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, how much can you step it up? Yeah, if you, you get offered an FCC job, yeah. you've got to take it. That's right. Um, all right, our uh, video of the day from our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama, UCA there, wanted to help all the men out there. Uh, Urology Centers of Alabama, all you have to do, whether it's prostate health or kidney stones, everything in between, get checked up, 16 locations across the great state of Alabama, Urology Centers of Alabama, urologycentersalabama.com, 205-930-0920. Stay healthy, guys, and get checked out this year with our friends at Urology Centers, Alabama.com. Rockstar, give me cut four. Yesterday in Phoenix, Devin Booker. Everybody knows Devin Booker, right? NBA fame? Yep. Devin Booker gets to spend a little time with the Alabama men's basketball team. Listen in. Uh, it's Devin Booker walking in there and uh, getting fired up with the Alabama team there. He goes on and addresses the team and talks about the opportunity before him. Pretty good little basketball player right now. Uh, I guess this is SEC, you know, coming from Kentucky. But I will tell you this, Booker suits up for the Tide tomorrow. They win the whole thing. <laughs> he gave them shoes, didn't he? Did I read that yeah. right? Did he give everybody a pair of shoes? Yeah, I gave him a bunch of gifts, uh, Nike gear. Yeah, uh, it's a little Nike, uh, Nike on collab. Nike. I think right. the kids call right. it. Right? He, he averages in the, the high twenties for the Suns. If he was to play against this great UConn defense, how many do you think he has? I don't know. Yeah. I guess probably his average. I, I, think, an NBA no, I, player. I think he goes 40, 45. No, he's an NBA player. He's right. going to scorch him. Uh, do we have the sound now, Rockstar? Here, here's the audio. Just get to it early enough. There's no reason to wait. Yeah, I just. I wasn't going to leave y'all empty hand. I got some new sneakers, the blue oh, ones. Oh, right on Griffin. Right on Griffin. <laughs> a lot of fun. Boy, Nike jams in, us man. up on the price point, yeah. but they throw away, f- or they throw free gear at everywhere. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, Rock starts right. Devin Booker. I mean, like, they was like pumped they like, like, like that. Like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. <laughs> Damn, Devin. Wrong SEC team for Devin Booker. Uh, 
I don't know. It's pretty cool to get those experiences, though, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. If you're an Alabama player, A, you walked away with what was described uh, as a heavier-than-I-thought swag bag, and you know it had some shoes in it that uh, they were very excited Did about. Did anybody uh, join UConn on the tarmac? <laughs> But, I mean, that is cool. Though. Your you, God's guess was Captain Sully. You have it. to get the play off the ground. They gave us, <laughs> you kind of got uh, shower flip-flops. They gave us shower flip-flops. <laughs> Captain Sully gave us. I'll see if I get this bird in the air, boys. discount on Wi-Fi. <laughs> it, it, it is cool, though, um, for a guy like Devin Booker. I mean, if you're one of these Alabama players, to be able to see that guy up close and personal like that. Oh, yeah. yeah that's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. And just, uh, and LT, you know this, I mean, LeBron and the place where Kobe played, the guys just enjoyed playing at, at Crypto last week, what used to be Staples. They were walking around. They were taking pictures oh, sure. with, the, with the Kobe statue, with uh, with the Kobe's pictures in the hallway, you know, the one where he's doing this. They all were taking pictures standing beside that. It just been a big deal to play there in that arena that, you know, so many Laker greats have played in. Would be funny if you had a guy like Grant Nelson, if you guys could have – we could have given him an NIL deal to go to Venice Beach – and get one of these pickup games, you know, him just walk on with a goofy T-shirt, and they're like, pick. who is this lanky-ass white guy? <laughs> Last pick. Little hat turned around backwards. <laughs> yeah. goes the white man can't jump. And completely dominates. <laughs> yeah. The best that, uh, idea is, is in Arizona, correct? Yes. And if they win, which is they're going to win, uh, to me, he looks like H.I., Raising Arizona. Picture of him. Oh. oh. The trophy, Raising Arizona. Oh, that's He does look like high. So. That's really good, Rockstar. Yeah. Have you guys uh, ever seen Raising Arizona? I've never yeah. seen yeah. Raising Cohen's Arizona. Fantastic early movie. films, yeah. yeah. Randall John takes Goodman. Cobbs in it. John they Goodman. basically have a baby at some point, right? They steal some baby. Steal some baby. Yeah. Yeah. Still us a baby. All right. Uh, before we take our next break, uh, we're going to do our four downs in the next segment per LT's request. Um, I want to get back to the Super League yesterday, and we, we shot it down. It's not going to happen because the SEC and the Big Ten will not sign off on it and give up their power. But it's the one thing I did like about it was the 10 team divisions and Sam Khan Jr. worked through the the teams that they had pronounced would be the 70 permanent teams in that division in that league and then the he did a 10 team that would be elevated rele, relegated that league um and I got the pictures here to go with it right for us we got this uh, here's the ACC division see if these ever look familiar to you uh, Florida State, NC State, North Carolina, Clemson, Duke, uh, basically what the ACC used to look yep. like. That was plus South Carolina. That was the old Thursday night ACC yeah, game plus the, South Carolina. Yeah, the, the old nine team ACC and yep. throw South Carolina in to yep. get ten. What's the next one? Uh, the old Big East. See if this looks familiar. Louisville, Notre Dame, West Virginia, Miami, Virginia Tech, Boston College, Rutgers. Oh, it looks a lot like the Big East. You should yeah. look. Throw in Cincinnati and Notre Dame. I love how we just throw Notre Dame in our yeah. conference. Like there's Big Ten. Oh, it's back to ten teams. Oh, it used to be the Big Ten. And that's the way the Big Ten used to look. What's the next one? Uh, frequent Flyer Division. Okay, this is one where you've, all the people that have been moving around lately, you got to throw them into one division. Missouri, Kansas State, Kansas, Utah, Iowa State, Northwestern, UCF, Nebraska, BYU, Colorado, not a bad division. Yeah, yeah it's still a really good division. Yeah, what's next? Uh, the Pac-10. Oh, 10 teams in the Pac <laughs> Pacific time zone. This is the old Pac-10 before you had Utah and Colorado in there. What's next? Oh, the SEC. Does this look good? Oh, who we got now? Who's oh, in the SEC? It's Georgia, Alabama, Ole Miss, LSU, Tennessee, Kentucky, Auburn, Florida, Mississippi State, Vandy. Oh, the original 10. It's basically like TBS is back to doing the 11 o'clock yeah. game. Uh, what's next? Oh, the Southwest Conference is back. I used to like the Southwest Conference. Texas, SMU, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M, Texas Tech, TCU, Houston, Arkansas, and Baylor. Now, you've got, uh, you threw out uh, a couple of, of them to put the Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in there, but nobody hates that, right? And then is there one more? Yeah, the relegation side. Okay, these are the teams that have to earn their way in? Yeah, these are the ones that would have been in there right. from the year before. Okay. And you see Navy and North Texas had such a bad year, they'd have been relegated out. Out of what? They would have gone into the into the abyss, into the group of fives. They'd be out of the Super League. And the two teams that would have been relegated up would have been James Madison yep. and then some other team. Yep. Maybe, I forget who the other one was. Yeah. So those are the two transfer spots at five and seven, uh, five and seven Navy North Texas that would have been kicked out, and and the uh, the the team like James Madison who had a great year would have bounced up. Yeah. So it's not going to happen. No, this is a terrible idea. But if it didn't happen, it wouldn't be too bad because we'd be back to the conferences we all used yeah, to love. That's true. That's, that would be the one. That's upshot. the only yeah. thing. Yeah, I like yeah. about it. Hey, in a uh, 
fog of sleep last night. I sent the wrong time for Josh Pate. He's actually next. Oh, Josh Pate. So you're going to get to talk to Josh Pate. My apologies on this. Rockstar, I apologize. Jim, I apologize. It's okay. Josh Pate is next. Yeah, I'm I'm good. (laughs) Josh Pate and Todd Furman, the next two guests, and I will not be around for the four downs then. Well, we'll get it. Yeah, y'all knock it out for me. Maybe you'll get somebody else to walk in for me. Uh, Show being brought to you by friends at NASCAR Back Racing at Talladega Super Speedway. All you have to do to get tickets is go to talladegasuperspeedway.com, talladegasuperspeedway.com. Brownie and I and the rest of the crew had a chance to get out uh, while LT was on vacation and enjoy an open track day. We rode around the track. We walked around the garage area. You can get tickets in the garage area. We climbed the high banks. We had a whole lot of fun. You can get tickets for the upcoming weekend, April 19th through the 21st, by going to talladegasuperspeedway.com, talladegasuperspeedway.com, and upgrade your experience as well. Take a tour uh, get tickets in the garage or in a suite. It's easy to do. Great camping as well. TalladegaSuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Call the next round now at 205-734-0923. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. Hey, for all of your IT and printing needs, reach out to our friends at Xerox Business Solutions. Look, I'm still one of those old school guys. I print my notes every single day for the show. If you watch the show here on the next round, you see all the notes in front of me. From day one, Xerox Business Solutions, they've been with us here at the next round. Local for over 45 years. For all of your IT and printing needs, visit XeroxBusinessSolutions.com or call 205-969-3000. That's 205-969-3000. The World Wide Web is a large place. Find all your favorite people and content in the same spot. NextRoundLive.com is full of wonderful tidbits about the show you know and love. Find our gear, listen to your favorite personalities, follow our socials, and enjoy your trip to NextRoundLive.com. The road to the Indy 500 runs through Birmingham, April 26th through 28th. The fastest IndyCar drivers in the world, Castro Nevis, Dixon, and Newgarden will put their skills to the test with one goal in mind, victory. Witness country music superstar Riley Green as Grand Marshal give the most iconic command in racing. Start your engine! Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix powered by Amherst at the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus prime beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop. Rare quality, well-done service. NASCAR is returning to the Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. The next round golf card is here. It's your chance to play four area golf courses for just 99 bucks. Get 18 holes plus a cart at Limestone Springs, Cross Creek, the Meadows, and the newly renovated Woodward Golf Club, presented by the Urology Centers of Alabama. That's a value of $247 for just 99 bucks. Or get the next round deluxe golf card for $119. That gets you all four courses with cart, plus an exclusive next round golf t-shirt, koozie, golf tees, and a sticker. There are no restrictions. The card is good through October of 2024. Supplies are limited, so get your golf card now at nextround.store. The great Josh Pate about to join us. He has been in uh, this week to Tuscaloosa, Starkville, and Auburn, all important important markets for us. Uh, On the recruiting trail, Four-star offensive lineman Mason Short, one-time Alabama commitment, decommitted, and yesterday picked Georgia, or maybe this morning, picked Georgia over Ohio State and Clemson. Mason Short now going to be a bulldog in 20. 
25. At the end of that commercial break, you're at EG talking about the uh, golf cart. Don't forget you can get it. Presented by Urology Centers of Alabama. 18 holes in cart at Limestone Springs, Cross Creek, the Meadows, and the newly renovated Woodward Golf Club. Next round dot store. Next round dot store. It's $247 value for just $99. Here is Josh Pate at Lake Kick. Josh, 24-7 sports, fresh off the road. What is up, Pate? How are you? I'm pretending to be awake for all three of you. That's how much I love you. How are we doing? Phenomenal, phenomenal. You're catching Dunaway right before a flight to Phoenix. He's all fired up. About to, about to head to Phoenix, my friend. Never thought I'd see Alabama in a Final Four. Well, that makes like a million of us. <laughs> my conundrum is, as you guys know, I can't spell basketball, much less cover basketball. But due to network affiliation, there is a credential waiting for me out there. Do I go? Yes. Yeah. I told you privately, yeah. yes, just for the football people who will be around. Yeah. Yeah, first, you go? Yeah, Trev, well, I would Trev go. Alberts. And, Wait, yeah. and you're in a city that, you know, it's it's opened up so much on direct flights. You know, it's just a pain in the ass to get anywhere from Birmingham. But in Nashville, you can just go to the airport and go straight to Phoenix. Why wouldn't you? you that, well, so, okay, I may be sold on this. The whole Birmingham piece, I have never flown out of Birmingham in my life, and I've lived in the South my entire life because of the direct situation. How many direct flights are there out of Birmingham? I think uh, there's five. I think it's more than that, isn't it? I think there's You've five. You've got Orlando, D.C., Dallas, Chicago. And New York. And New York. Is that it? We got Vegas. There's directs to I'm, Vegas. I'm not sure we have Charlotte. Vegas anymore. There's a direct to Charlotte. There's one direct to New York City. I mean, there's a direct. Well, there ain't one to Phoenix. Yeah, there's, there's not one yeah, to yeah, Phoenix. Not, I tell you that. There's a direct. It's, it's Houston, not a lot. Houston, Atlanta. I mean, anything goes through Atlanta. It's technically Atlanta. Yeah, I would almost tell you this, Josh. It seems like every other person I know that flies, they fly out of Atlanta from Birmingham. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I've flown out of Columbus, Georgia, and have to do about the same thing I would do there as I do Birmingham. Yeah. I'm not knocking Birmingham. I'm just saying we got to do better. No, guys. our we airport's do- great, it's great because airport, of the accessibility, yeah. but the yeah. problem is – you know the, the directs yeah it's pain yeah so ass. if we want if we want to go to shuttlesworth and hang out we'll have a good day if we right. want to get somewhere we have to have an entire day uh all right so you've been on a car tour uh, a lot of places in the spring speaker series uh specifically alabama and auburn in this state but many others give me a coach that maybe it was a pleasant surprise to you You talked to a coach and you're like hey i was i was pleasantly surprised by that visit Oh, uh, Kane Womack. Not that that's a surprise, Good but dude. I've never been able to sit down with Kane yeah. before. So, I, I mean, as you guys know, now it's no longer illegal to speak to coordinators <laughs> in that kind of setting over there. I think he he did a really good job when we had him on of talking about what it actually means to take the job, what it actually means to try and transition from Nick Saban's defense to the defense he's installing. He got as in the weeds as you can get and still keep an audience's attention on what personnel in one system would do in this system. Talked about how his system and Nick Saban's have probably sort of started to mesh a little bit more as you transition into playing a lot of base nickel a whole lot more than you would have in the past. Uh, I thought it was really interesting also to listen to him talk about how the process went of sort of an exit evaluation of Nick Saban about his own players. And we spoke about this off camera a lot about how you know, one of the most valuable resources Nick Saban has been for him is getting honest assessment, kind of like you would an NFL general manager pre-draft. Talk to a coach. You know the ones who are going to be real with you. Saban's always had that reputation. And Kane Womack said, man, I got the best scouting report I could ever have on my guys from the guy who had recruited and coached and developed a lot of them. So I loved that. Uh, I, I think – just the entire vibe at Alabama, as again, you guys know, it, anytime you talk to someone in that building, they'll always say, it's so different here. Not worse, not better. They always do that. Not, not worse, not better, but it's just kind of different. I'm sure some people love it more. I'm sure some people love it a little bit less, but everywhere I've gone, people have asked, hey, have you been to Bama yet? Have you, have you felt what it's like at Bama? What's Bama about to do in the transfer portal? And that, that third question is the one we're about to answer because I think they're going to be pretty active there. But I, um, I do not view 2024 as some kind of reset year, drop-off year, or anything like that for them. I don't think they feel that way. I think a lot of the public does. I didn't get that vibe. Well, you know what's coming, Pate. And I've talked to Alabama fans that are like, oh, I cannot believe how different things are. 
And I try to say, well, Kalen DeBoer has done it his way at every level, and the results are incredible, so let him do it his way. But you know if this team, God forbid, lost in Camp Randall to Wisconsin or they lose to Georgia and Tuscaloosa, the first thing that's going to be said is, man, they are too lax. It's too loose. They're not doing it the same way. Yeah, it, it's inevitable. It doesn't, matter if it, it doesn't matter if it takes them until week 11 or 12 to lose a game. When they do, that'll be the case. Can you, by the way, Lance, could, what, what combination of words do you think will make up the sentence, well, maybe a little less music at practice, a little bit more attention to fundamentals? Because that's coming. I just don't know the exact wording, but I'm going to see someone say that music at practice probably contributed to a loss at some point here, and I am both petrified of it and totally ready for it at the same time. Probably followed by the phrase blitz, bam, a blitz, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've been to Tuscaloosa and just this week to Auburn. We'll talk about Auburn in a second. I have not been to Starkville, and I am interested on your trip, your between Tuscaloosa and Auburn trip over to Starkville. Um, what's that like over there? Um, because Zach Arnett felt like he was pushed into something because of the unfortunate passing of, of Mike Leach, and they quickly changed and they've got their coach, they think, for a long, long time. What was that like, getting to know that staff? Uh, the staff, good. Uh, Shawd Williams is head of strength and conditioning over there now. It was good to see him. Jeff Levy, it was the first time I had sat down with him in that kind of setting. And um, it's just so obvious from talking to staff, but also talking to people who have been there through multiple regimes. When you're on your, what is it, fourth staff or whatever since 2017, you walk around the building right now and you know, it's as simple as looking at signage on the wall and I'm walking around with Brandon, the SID over there. And he said, Hey, that, you know, that sentence right there was two staffs ago. Then the next to the last staff wanted this sentence up and you could tell there's just so much like overlap of multiple staffs that tried to start installing culture in many different ways. And so now you've got a new staff that tries to do it. And of course you think you nailed it. And of course people think Jeff Levy will be successful and gives off a great vibe, I'm, but that's what gets you hired. So you got to see him win football games in the fall. Ultimately, I think what stands out about Levy that many people articulated long before I met him was the guy will never lack for confidence and he will never lack for a willingness to tell you publicly. So it's not, it's not sheepish in front of the camera, but then get him off camera and, and he'll he'll put the chest out a little bit. They they fully believe and he fully believes he's been ready for the job for a few years. And so he does not strike you as a guy who is drinking from a fire hose, learning on the fly. Let's walk the tightrope in year one. Maybe that's the way it plays out, but he didn't strike me that way. Uh, it, some people say Lane Kiffin. I don't see that. Do you have a coach that he his personality reminds you of? Ooh. Um, is it Josh Heupel? Is it? Well, Josh Heupel was the guy I was about to say. It's 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 kind of that vibe. I would say Levy probably seems a little more ready to you know come to blows at any given point. Like I don't I don't I could not see Josh Heupel go from zero to one hundred in five seconds. I, I could see Levy do that. So maybe Heupel. I'd have to think on that one. Done way, I've always told you complex questions, That's right. springing them on me. It's just a, it's a terrible idea because I will freeze up and filibuster and never give you a straight answer. Yeah, uh, to do not go complex with Josh Pate. Uh, Lake kick there's, Josh. There's no correct answer. He, he's, yeah, he's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Here's how it's done with Pate. You were in Auburn too. Talk about Hugh Freeze. Yeah. Great question. Thank Ryan. you. Thank yeah. you very much, <laughs> I'm a true pro. <laughs> they all talk about it. Talk about it, yes. Um. Hugh Freeze and Mac Brown are the two guys that we've sat down with that I've known going in, they're going to shoot straight with you. It doesn't really matter. Now, Hugh Freeze will be a lot more careful and guarded and slower with the tempo, but they're going to pretty much tell you how it is. And he talked a lot about last year and how realized pretty early on chemistry is not here. We don't have the intangibles or the tangibles really that we need on this team. I thought it, he probably talked about it with you guys, too, about how he kind of put it in the players' hands, which is a good move on multiple fronts, by the way. It's up to you guys. You guys figure it out. You bring your plan to me. And I do that with my staff all the time so that if it works, I get credit. And if it doesn't, <laughs> I get the blame. It's a great, it's a great strategy. But I, I, I wanted to know about the quarterback position there because I remember coming out of the bowl game, it was 
this is going to be an open competition. And now in spring, it's this is Peyton Thorne's job to lose. And you always wonder, does the guy really just look that good in spring? Or are you guarding against losing all your depth to the portal and you need to maintain the at least the veneer of an open quarterback competition or, or whatever? Um, I think that they know they've got to play a ton of young guys this year. And sometimes when you know that in spring, coaches will say, hey, we got a lot of battles going on at a lot of positions, and, and we'll see how it works out in the fall. Hugh Freeze just flat out said last night when we had him on the show, we're going to have to play way more young guys than I want to. Are they ready to play in the SEC? Some of them probably not, but we're going to have to do it anyway. Now, I think that's the smart way to handle it because they're going to probably lose some games at some point this fall because of that. You want to go ahead and subtly brace people for that in spring instead of letting this entire summer's worth of hype build around Cam Coleman and wait till you see this freshman class well, the freshman class is impressive. I was in the building yesterday, and pretty much everyone I pointed to and asked who is that was a freshman. So they look great, but they are freshmen, and there's no quick way to microwave them into being SEC ready. So I think he's really smart in the way he's approaching it right now and saying, you know, we're going to play a lot of young guys. Normally, I wouldn't do that. This is not a normal situation. We got to hit the reset button. Okay, this one's not complex. <laughs> this one's not simple. It's kind of in the middle. Right. But Missouri and Ole Miss coming off 11 win seasons. I brought this point up a couple of days ago when we were in Auburn. If Auburn would have been focused and beaten New Mexico State and didn't give up a fourth and 31 to Alabama and then rolled in and took care of Maryland, they would have been nine and four. Would they be that sexy team that people are talking about in year two with Hugh Freeze going to a college football playoff? It's almost like maybe they dodged a bullet because they're under the radar now coming off a of six and seven. Have you said this a lot, Lance? Have you presented this idea a lot? I, I have presented it a couple of times. Uh, like what I'm asking is, if I stole this and used it myself, oh, go ahead. would people realize it? Uh, I don't think they would, no. no. Okay, great. All right. Because I will it's, tell you this real quick. I, I think my, my greatest point that was ever used nationally is I told Greg McElroy, when you watch Drake London, and he was doing a USC game, uh, this is years ago, I said, he's Mike Williams of the Tampa Bay Bucks. I said, but when you use that, give me credit. And he's used it, and he never gave, never me, gave credit. me credit. Never gave me credit, Which is yeah. fine. Yeah. They probably, he got away with it. Probably a production truck. Yeah, yeah, probably production truck there stepped on him. <laughs> um, this is a really good point because there's inevitably every year there are going to be some random things in a sport where we score in threes and sevens that make you look way worse or way better than you were. Uh, it doesn't change the caliber of team you are in reality. So answer is, yeah, I absolutely think it. I never would have thought of it from that angle. But yeah, because everyone would just be saying, ooh, year two of a staff. Now, you know what that means. And then you would ask them, what does that mean? And they would say, well, well, well they get better, which sometimes is true anecdotally and sometimes it's not. I think it may be better for them that that didn't happen because it's not hard to grab people's attention when you're floating around 500 if they had stumbled into nine wins last year can you imagine how many bad habits and bad ideals would have been validated in a lot of people's minds he actually said that now that i think about it last night he said we probably needed a whole lot of that now he's not saying i'm glad we lost games but past being passed i'm not sure they would go back and change that in retrospect if they could choose to yeah, my analytic sheet says you'll get more clicks if you go Lebby more hypel than Kiffin. That it'll that's, bring so that's what the that's what the chart says. That's yeah, what the analytics yeah, says. Yeah, you go, go for two. You, you go for that there because it'll bring in the Tennessee crazies. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. okay, so that's how that works. <laughs> or Auburn only sent one after Milrow because they wanted to be under the radar in year two. Yeah, the plan was for twenty twenty four. That's right. There you go. Yeah, it's good planning. Uh, all right, he is Josh Pate at Lake Kick. Josh, you can see the uh, speaker series right there uh, with 24-7 Sports on his YouTube channel as well. Some great conversations with some of the top coaches in America. Does Bama pull the upset tomorrow? Yes. Ooh, and you'll be there no, for No, that's what uh, the analytics chart said to say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about UConn? Yeah. Good night, Birmingham. You've been a great crowd. That was really it's, good. <laughs> that was really good. Good <laughs> analytics. Yes. Can't wait till tomorrow where I see you doing this in a cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Pate. Safe travels to Phoenix.
See you guys. All right. Uh, Josh Pate with us on the Johnston RV Center.com hotline. Yeah. The show also being brought to you by our friends at New York Butcher Shop, a way to enjoy the Final Four. Get some steaks and a bottle of wine from our friends at New York Butcher. Yeah, Maddie picked us up. Um, I think Forster's got the picture here. The before, look at this. Do you know what that is? Um, that is uh, meatballs. Smash burgers. Oh, Smash yeah. Burgers. I told you guys yesterday in Rocky's Four Downs that I haven't been using the Blackstone. Busted out the Smash Burgers. That is the finished result. Heck the yeah. double smash pad. It Lance, was fantastic. freaking incredible. And I had for the first time the New York Butcher Shop's baked beans. They're the best baked beans I've ever had. Okay. The flavoring is absolutely incredible. Stop into one of those two great locations. Pick up some of that ground beef. Pick up fillets for this weekend if you're a big Bama fan for the Final Four. Great selection of fine wines and desserts. Two locations for you. Cahaba Heights, the original, now in Greystone. Rare quality, well done service. Our friends at the New York Butcher Shop. And our friends at NASCAR getting ready. Smash Burgers will work camping. You can camp out NASCAR week, April 19th through the 21st. Camping open all week long. Everything from primitive to the high-end RV camping is available for you. Race tickets right there as well. TalladegaSuperspeedway.com TalladegaSuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA Two races on Saturday. Walker Hayes Saturday night. Geico 500 on Sunday. Your Geico 500 ticket gets you to the infield for the Walker Hayes concert on Saturday night. It is a must-see. It is TalladegaSuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA Follow John Lunsford on Twitter at Jay Luntz. The road to the Indy 500 runs through Birmingham, April 26th through 28th. The fastest IndyCar drivers in the world, Castro Nevis, Dixon, and Newgarden will put their skills to the test with one goal in mind, victory. Witness country music superstar Riley Green as Grand Marshal give the most iconic command in racing. Start your engine. Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix powered by Amherst at the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. On game day, you never have to decide which teams to watch, only what combination of bites, burgers, wings, and more to order. Plus, where else are your favorite draft beers always poured at a frozen 29 degrees? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Stick around after the sun sets. Twin Peaks is open really late. Wind down with bourbon and late night bites. Only at Twin Peaks. The next round golf card is here. It's your chance to play four area golf courses for just 99 bucks. Get 18 holes plus a cart at Limestone Springs, Cross Creek, the Meadows, and the newly renovated Woodward Golf Club, presented by the Urology Centers of Alabama. That's a value of $247 for just 99 bucks. Or get the next round deluxe golf card for $119. That gets you all four courses with cart, plus an exclusive next round golf t-shirt, koozie, golf tees, and a sticker. There are no restrictions. The card is good through October of 2024. Supplies are limited, so get your golf card now at nextround.store. Hey, you. Days warming up. Looking like spring. And in New Balance Birmingham, we've got the thing. What pops and what's fresh? Check the selects. Come together at New Balance Birmingham on Highway 280, right next to Chick-fil-A. New Balance Birmingham, we got now. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. But it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like Zero Sugar and Zero Calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words, and that's my job. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar, best Coke ever? NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown, and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light. 
is on now. All right, Dunaway on his way to Phoenix. We're about to talk with Todd Furman to get all the latest on the point spreads. Uh, BetTheBoardPodcast.com. A uh, quick breaking news story. I don't think I've ever seen this actual breaking news. Bronny James has declared for the NBA draft and entered his name in the transfer portal, according to On3 Sports. I don't know if he gets drafted. It was covering all the bases there, though. I'll give yeah. him credit. I mean, if you're an organization, do you take a flyer in the second round on Bronny I, just based on name? Maybe in second round, yeah. No guaranteed money there. Todd Furman is with us now. BetTheBoardPodcast.com. BetTheBoardPodcast.com. At Todd Furman on Twitter. What is up, Furman? How are you? I'm doing well, gentlemen. But with all these road trips Dunaway keeps taking, that's more liability the station takes on. And I'm not sure that's always a great thing for all those parties involved. So kudos to you guys for having the bravery to send him back out to the West Coast for the second time in as many weeks. As you know... You occasionally have to play the underdogs, Furman. It can't always be favorites. Yeah, and, and speaking of liability, Furman, I mean, this this UConn machine, I backed Illinois. I don't know where you were on that game, and it's 23-all, and I'm like, okay, Terrence Shannon has done nothing. I think Illinois has got a great shot, maybe even a live dog, and then we get a 30-0 run. Now UConn has not only won 10 straight NCAA tournament games, they've also covered 10 straight, winning by an average of 28 points per game. You really can't get this number any higher than 11 or a half or 12 or wherever you're shopping it right now. But I, I just don't see any money really coming in on the dog in this spot. It's been difficult to attract money that's willing to oppose UConn in the betting market. And you mentioned it, LT. You look at what they're doing, covering numbers regardless of where odds makers are setting these prices. The best point per game differential in the tournament over a two year span, passing UCLA at plus 23.1. I mean, this is a team that's trailed for five minutes and 50 seconds out of the 320 NCAA tournament minutes since the 2023 Sweet 16. So that's now an eight game span, and they've trailed for just 28 seconds in total so far this tournament. When you look at UConn, though, this is a number that's clearly inflated based on their current form. I mean, they were a nine, nine and a half point favorite against St. John's in the Big East Conference tournament, and nobody is making the Johnnies a one possession favorite over Alabama as currently constructed. But when you have these games that are in a standalone situation, the number did open nine and a half, ten. You had professional betters get out in front of it, laying it with Alabama, knowing that that number wasn't going to last. But I think what's interesting about it, when you try and find some other ways to get in front of UConn, you nailed it. Talking about how Illinois was able to hang around for a half before UConn made those adjustments. And I think we could see a similar scenario here, whereas if Alabama is going to give UConn fits, it's got to happen early on in this contest. I know they erased an eight-point deficit at the half against North Carolina, but UConn is just cut differently. So if this number got to seven, that would be my buy point to take a small value proposition on Alabama in the first half. Do you have at your disposal a player prop on Mark Sears points? This is a guy that scores double digits. He scores in the 20s basically every time out for him. And so I'm curious where the guys in Vegas think he will uh, play against this UConn defense, which, as we discovered yesterday, has allowed 80-plus points twice all season long. Yeah, trying to put up uh, crooked numbers against UConn's defense isn't something that's going to make anybody look like an absolute rock star. But Sears is over under for points, 19 and a half in this game. And I think what's interesting is you go through UConn's players and you know there's so many different ways they can beat you. Uh, but Sears will have to be the guy that looks to carry the team. And I think that's where Danny Hurley's defensive setup will be very interesting. Do you allow Sears to be a scorer first and try and take everyone else away? Uh, or how do you go about trying to throw some different looks at the very talented Alabama guard that truly is the straw that'll stir the drink out there? So at 19 and a half for me, probably not a number that, that I'd be running to get involved in. Uh, but at the same time, look, it's correlated, no doubt. If Sears is going to score 20 plus, that'll be Alabama's best path to keeping this inside the number. And the one thing, when we talk about numbers this large in the final four, the last time we saw a price tag this big was Gonzaga back in 2021 laying 14 and a half to UCLA and we knew that the Bruins hung around in that spot we haven't seen a whole lot of double digit favorites in the past in the final four but the limited sample size we have seen the underdog has fared exceptionally well Todd Furman with us bet the board podcast.com at Todd Furman on Twitter um, so I'll ask you the question that led us to look at how often UConn has given up 80 this year with uh, Alabama an 11 half point dog, the total of 160 and a half, where is the number where Alabama, in your mind, has to score where you think, okay, they have got a chance in this game if they can score X? 
You know, I think when you look at Alabama, I mean, this is a team that scored 75-plus points in 31 of the 36 games this year and 70-plus in every contest. You know, they're 90.6 points per game this season, most by an SEC team since Kentucky in 95-96. The offensive efficiency has been there. We know that UConn uh, has only struggled to slow teams down. I mean, that St. John's game is the one that stands out where they gave up 90. I think if Alabama is going to find a way to cover 75, kind of has to be the bare minimum, unless you get UConn on an off shooting night or the Huskies decide to turn this into a half-court rock fight because Alabama is not going to change its stripes. They're going to try and get out and run. You have to try and eliminate some of the bad shots that will lead to transition runouts for UConn. But this is a Huskies team. When you look at some of their offensive efficiency numbers, they're outstanding, but they can be slow and methodical and will Nate Oates' team be able to get UConn to buy into the way Alabama wants to run up and down the floor, or will UConn try and frustrate Alabama and turn it into 20 to 25 second possessions more often than not throughout the course of the 40 minutes? Furman, on the other side of the bracket, I said coming into this tournament, NC State is playing possessed. I'm going to stay away from them. Of course, I take Texas Tech and lay the points in the first round. I take Duke, lay the points in the regional final. And NC State continues to not only win, cover, survive. They've won nine straight elimination games. DJ Burns has been fantastic. But to me, this Purdue animal, now that they've gotten to a Final Four, is much different. Um, I don't know how you don't lay the points here. Am I completely wrong? No, it's definitely a lay it or don't play it type scenario. I was actually hoping that given NC State's current form, the number would come out a little bit shorter and maybe we get a chance to lay an eight and a half or even an eight at some books that want to overreact a little bit. But you mentioned NC State and what they've been able to do. I mean, this is a group that's exceeded everyone's expectations, winning a lot of these games outright as an underdog, doing so three out of four times in the tournament. And the only game they didn't was one that went past 40 minutes against Oakland, where they closed as a six-point favorite. You look at the Wolfpack, they've now held six straight opponents under 40% from the floor. The first time they've done so as a program going all the way back to 2008. They've held all four opponents so far this tournament to 67 or less points in regulation. This big dance. But what goes up must come down. And I think Alabama fans saw that early on in the Clemson game when the tide started 1 of 12 from beyond the arc. Then Alabama started to get hot. Clemson's defensive three-point field goal percentage defense declined a little bit. I'm not sure that NC State's going to be so fortunate. Purdue can beat you a variety of different ways. They're going to want to pound the paint and allow Zach E to operate against D.J. Burns, but they have a number of players that can knock down jumpers from the perimeter. I mean, this is the number two three-point field goal percentage team in the country, uh, and I think this is where NC State's Cinderella run comes to an end. But much like ULT, I laid the points with Texas Tech that first round of the tournament, laid six with Duke last week, thought I was in decent shape at the half with a 27-21 lead, but NC State went out there and took some of my lunch money. So it's favorite or pass here. Uh, I think this Purdue team is on a collision course to get to the national championship uh, and avenge what we saw as that first round monumental upset last year, losing to a 16 seed. Uh, Todd Furman with us for a few more moments. Either one of these upsets, North Carolina State or Alabama, they rank where for you in Final Four upset history, just based on the point spread. So point spread wise, we'd be talking about Duke UNLV of that magnitude if Alabama is able to knock off UConn. NC State Purdue wouldn't be up there as much. But uh, the one thing I will say, guys, I think when, even though the numbers are a little bit bigger in the Alabama UConn game, I think Alabama has a better chance to upset UConn despite UConn's dominance over the last tournament plus, uh, that NC State against Purdue. And the reason I say that is because with Alabama, we know that they have a higher ceiling than arguably any team in the country when those shots are falling. I just don't truly see a path where NC State can go out there, continue doing what they're doing with some of the matchups they're going to face against the Purdue team that's now playing with a little bit of house money. So unless the Boilers shoot 12% from beyond the arc, I think Alabama has a better chance to pull off the upset than NC State does against Purdue. Interesting. How much liability with Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes? I like UConn plus the two and a half tonight. I know they're shorthanded. Um, I cannot believe I'm talking women's I, basketball lines right now. I think it has to be now. the first time we've asked for it. I mean, it, 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 look, and I I know it's probably a small amount that is being bad, but I mean, I would think that there's liability on Iowa. Yeah, the betting handle has actually been ratcheted up. It doesn't rival the men's. Uh, it would on Monday or Sunday, I should say, if we're talking about an Iowa South Carolina national championship game, given all the star power there. Not to the point of the men's national championship, but some of the games that you saw in the early rounds. And people want to gravitate towards the names they know. So with Iowa here as a short favorite in this game, you're going to see this two and a half turn into three uh, at a lot of spots. And I think that's where people would be a little bit more intrigued to back UConn plus three and a half 
talked to a lot of sharp betters uh, who d- dabble in the women's side, and they were willing to take the points with LSU. Who knows how much differently that game plays out if Angel Reese doesn't get injured uh, and then fall victim to poor shot selection. But when you look at a game like this, what's so fascinating to me is Caitlin Clark, rightfully so, grabs all the headlines. But Paige Beckers on the other side was one of the most touted recruits that we've ever seen in women's college basketball. So should be a phenomenal game, uh, and we'll see if Gino Ariema, who has the coaching edge, can deal with a shortened bench and come up with a unique way to defend Caitlin Clark, who's been as good a facilitator as she has been a scorer so far this tournament. We, we were laughing earlier, Dunaway mentioned, and I think you may be right, South Carolina is undefeated, and they're the least talked about team in this whole thing. It's great. It, it, yeah, it's incredible. The dominance that we've seen from this Gamecocks women's program, I mean, Dawn Staley you know, has this team locked in, and they can kind of fly under the radar without some of the pressure because they don't have that one definitive go-to score. And you look at some of the numbers that you've seen from the South Carolina team. I know there are numbers on a nightly basis for the women's side, uh, but massive price tags each and every night. Uh, and I think even in a national championship scenario, you know, you're going to get a little bit of a discount buy potentially on South Carolina, who's just that much more complete than UConn or Iowa, uh, despite not having that household name like those two programs do right now. All right, all the games, he's really good on NASCAR, Major League Baseball, uh, all the Final Four and National Championship games right there at bettheboardpodcast.com. That is bettheboardpodcast.com. It is always fun, Furman. Thank you for the time. Always a pleasure. And one last thing, gentlemen, because I know you guys get into golf pools. We lined up a couple of ringers, so we will have a master's pod as well for all those loyal Bet the Board listeners, and hopefully they'll have a chance to check that out because a lot of things will be decided. Uh, in that particular tournament by the time we have a chance to chat again a week from today. Mm, Masters pod. I will tune in for that one. So if I'm playing, (laughs) if I'm playing, uh, you know, those masters pools, you guys give us maybe some, you know, hot tips, uh, long shots, things like that. Oh, no doubt about it. Well, one of the preeminent golf odds makers out here in town and also a caddy that knows a lot of these players inside and out. So we'll see what happens when we roll the ball out there. I'm taking a back seat as a host and going to allow these boys to do their thing. So I'm as excited to listen to it as I know a lot of our listeners will be as well. Yeah, that that sounds actually really good. A lot of people do master's pools and they need the help there. So bet the board. I'll be able to find that at bettheboardpodcast.com, right? Yes, sir. You can sign up uh, and subscribe to know that moment the podcast drops, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Wondery, all the podcast platforms that you lean on on a daily basis. Fantastic. Same place you get our show, you can get that as well. Thank you very much, Furman. Have a great weekend. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Enjoy the games this weekend, and make sure you keep bail money aside for Dunaway if he gets himself in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. We got it. We got it earmarked. Furman with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Don't forget, Johnston RV Center has repriced their entire lot. Everything on the lot with a new price. And they are so confident in their pricing that they are giving you a nationwide price guarantee. You bring them a price on a comparable RV, they will beat it. Anything nationwide at Johnston RV Center. They also appreciate the military the way that we, we do on this show. You make America the greatest country in the universe, no questions asked. Active duty or retired military, you get great discounts there at Johnston RV Center. I-65, exit 304 in Coleman, 334 in Decatur, always online, johnstonrvcenter.com. Um, that comment there that even though NC State, the point spread is lower, he thinks better if you want to pick an upset, better chance oh, at Alabama. That's interesting. Yeah, I agree 100%. Just because you know, we have seen Bama at their top of the game in the regular season. I mean, I mean they're a better team. Yeah, they're NC a better State. team. Yeah. I don't even think it's close. And this DJ Burns situation has been amazing. I don't know if you asked, if you heard them ask about would he think about playing in the NFL? And yeah, in the future, he was like, uh, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, but, man, you watch the dancing bear has been incredible up until this point. But Alabama, when they're hitting their threes, um, you know, they look unbeatable at times. So, you know, if Alabama comes out and offensively, they're able to get this thing clicking. I just don't see a path to victory for NC State. But I've said this for a long time. Though. No, no, I've been saying that the entire tournament. Yeah. I mean, I'm the one that said coming into the tournament, whatever you do, don't buy into a team like NC State. You get sucked in by these teams that have to go on these winning streaks in their conference tournaments just to make it in. They run out of gas. Don't buy into yeah, them. And, and I said it earlier, um, there is only one shocking result coming from Phoenix this weekend to me, and that is NC State winning this whole thing. Yeah, I would agree yeah, with that. Yeah, because, like, you know, if Alabama does beat UConn, Purdue probably, if it is Purdue, is probably a four, four-and-a-half-point favorite. They've matched up before. 
And I just don't view that as a monumental upset. What do you do if you're NC State's AD? Kevin Keats has already got that two-year extension, but now he's taking him to the Final Four. He got the For those that don't know the story, the NC State coach might have gotten fired. I, uh, it he, was a, he, I talked to some NC State fans at uh, one of our Calcutta's and they were saying that he would have been fired if he would not have won the ACC so, tournament. So they're just waiting for him to lose a game in Washington, D.C. so they could fire yeah. the guy. And he never lost a game there. And, and then they got to the tournament. Well, he got an automatic two-year extension just by winning the conference I tournament. I think that accelerator is enough. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, I do. Look, I mean, what have you done for <laughs> well, you he had to the Final a, Four now. But he had won a tournament <laughs> game before. That. This reminds me so much of what we saw with Frank Martin. Yep, it's 100%. Carolina. Yeah. I don't think Frank – he didn't have to win the conference tournament to get in, but other than that, it's identical. Yeah, and, and you know, there was a lot of fanfare, and that's great. First time South Carolina had done it, and second time NC State's done it now. But I don't think you give him anything on top of that two-year escalator. Yeah, I mean, so he cashed in on that, which a lot of NC State fans are like, it's fun to go to the tournament, but – they were about to fire this guy, and now he's with us two more years, or at least another year, because it's a two-year extension automatic. But boy, now that he's going to the Final Four, whew, that's rare air. It is. I mean, if I'm his agent, I'm like, I know we got the automatic two years, but I don't know if you just saw us a Phoenix. I would push back. Your client is lucky that <laughs> he still has. Yeah, as you well know, we yeah. already talked to you about what the buyout was going to be yeah. when we fired him. Uh, more on Alabama and the Final Four and uh, the Final Four as a whole, and we'll get to four downs. Michelson Laser Vision bringing you part of the show. Yeah, it seems like everything is going up in price, but not for LASIK and Michelson Laser Vision. Dr. Jennifer and Mark Michelson have held the cost of LASIK steady at the pre-inflation pricing from two years ago. Call 205-969-8100, the number that I dialed more than two decades ago. Ask for Amy Toe, the next round sent you. They are going to hook you up with a hassle-free consultation. You have zero to lose to find out if LASIK is right for you. I had the 2200 Vision. Ask after the procedure, which only took 12 minutes for both eyes, 2015 vision better than 2020. Make the phone call that we made, 205-969-8100 or online, michelsonlaservision.com. Follow the next round on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Next Round Live. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, you're in the red zone for every college rivalry and divisional matchup all season long. I mean, where else are the scenic views as good as your view of the game? Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Tournament time is almost here, but any time is a great time to jump on with MyBookie.ag. When you sign up at MyBookie.ag, use code NEXTROUND for a special sign-on bonus. You can use that bonus right away. Win once with it. It is yours and yours forever. Not like some of the sites that make you win 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times before you keep the bonus. You win once at MyBookie.ag. It is yours forever. Basketball tournaments, NBA, the start of Major League Baseball, NASCAR, and golf. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. MyBookie.ag. Code NEXTROUND. The road to the Indy 500 runs through Birmingham, April 26th through 28th. The fastest IndyCar drivers in the world, Castro Navis, Dixon, and Newgarden will put their skills to the test with one goal in mind, victory. Witness country music superstar Riley Green as Grand Marshal give the most iconic command in racing. Start your engine! Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix powered by Amherst at the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now. Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. Hey, you. Days warming up. Looking like spring. And in New Balance Birmingham, we've got the thing. What pops and what's fresh? Check the selects. Come together at New Balance Birmingham on Highway 280, right next to Chick fil A. New Balance Birmingham, we got now. 
NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. Eric Musselman is off to USC, the Arkansas coach. So uh, a lot of people watching Oxford, Mississippi today. We talked about it earlier, but Chris Beard would be um, a lot of people reporting the leading candidate to take that job at Arkansas. Uh, again, it, it would be very, very difficult to say no to that. I got to imagine you love Chris Beard. If I'm Arkansas, I don't know what I'll pay for him, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's 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 Chris Beard or Dan Hurley. At least that's where you – you know, I saw, I think it was Bobby talking about that UConn is a blue blood. I consider it Arkansas is. blue blood. They've only won the one national championship. Is that it? Yeah, yeah well, never mind then. Well, they, I was going to look at Final Fours, though. I, I would say they've got five Final Fours. Yeah, I, I you would You know, when I start that. to stack up what you've got in the SEC, and this is weird, I guess Kentucky really is your only, your, your, your only blue blood. Uh, 41-45, 78, 90, 94, 95 for the Final Fours. So is that five? A seven. Seven. Yeah, or excuse me, six. I apologize, six. But, you know, 41 and 45, that was yeah. – I kind of discount those a lot of times. That's back when the NIT was the bigger deal. Since the NCAA tournament was your aim, they've had four. I mean, it's a good program, though. Maybe not a blue blood, but a really good program. Yeah, but I, I find it hard to believe, as good as UConn has been, that their collective can even touch what you've got no in way. Arkansas. No way. Yeah, so I don't know. If I am Arkansas, I believe I've got one of the best programs in college basketball, so I at least go after those guys. Yeah, I mean, I aim high. Yeah, and Beard, it comes down to, is there loyalty to Ole Miss or not? He would definitely take that job. And for Dan Hurley... You know, I think he probably stays, but if you're doubling his salary and you show him that your collective can pay a lot more, if you're building for the future, maybe it's a little bit different. I don't know. You think it would be different living in stores, Connecticut and Fayetteville, Arkansas? Is that a big difference to you? Uh, you're talking about financially? No, I'm just talking about overall. I mean, it's got to be a totally different uh, place totally to Totally different, stores. but I bet the, the cost of living is probably a fourth. In Fayetteville? In Fayetteville compared to what you pay in stores. And Fayetteville's a good spot now. It's not the Northeast. And see, that's another See, I've thing. never been to Fayetteville. It's one of the few SEC towns I haven't yeah. been to. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Little Rock a bunch, and I'm not a fan. <laughs> I've been through Little Rock. I think I stopped and bought gas there. It's about my extent of Little Rock. I, um, you know, that was one thing with Rick Patino that he was apparently, and Dunaway has said this before, because Dunaway covered Patino when he was the coach at Kentucky. And Rick Patino didn't get a thrill out of going to Starkville, Mississippi, and Oxford, Mississippi, and Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He loved the idea of going to these big East Coast cities. And that was one reason the ACC appealed to him. One reason is he was playing games in Boston. He's, you know, playing games, you know, in some of the blue blood places like North Carolina. Um, it's one reason he liked being the coach on the East Coast there. And I don't know how Hurley would feel about that. I don't know if he's I mean, he's definitely North, an East Coast that's guy. That's right. He's a Northeast guy. And you never know if that fits in Fayetteville. Well, it fits if you're winning. You know, well, he, yeah, that kills yeah, a lot he, of things. he doesn't win. They're yeah. like, who is this carpetbagger? Yeah. Why does he talk like this? Why does he call it a tournament? Yeah. I, don't, I, mean, I mean, again, a lot of people don't want to – like, he's got it dialed in right now. Oh, Hurley? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As much as anybody in the country. You said he's maybe the next Coach K. I mean, you win back-to-backs. Oh, I mean, that was and, and you're unlikable. The direction you're going to go. <laughs> I mean, those two things, right? You're yeah, back-to-back. Yeah. You're in a blue blood and you're unlikable. And he's unlikable. got all three things. Yep. Uh, the next round, golf card, by the way. Your chance to play four area golf courses for just $99. 18 holes of golf and cart at Limestone Springs, Cross Creek, the Meadows, and the newly renovated Woodward Golf Club, all presented by Urology Centers of Alabama. 
It's $247 value for just $99, or get the next round deluxe golf card for just $119. That gets you all four courses with cart, plus an exclusive next round golf t-shirt, koozie, golf tees, and a sticker. No restrictions. The card is good through October 2024. Supplies are limited, so get your golf card now at nextround.store. That is nextround.store for the next round golf card. Once you get past, if you get past Beard, I don't, I don't know for Arkansas where you go. Like, I don't know what the hot names are in basketball right now. I just looked at Louisville, hired the Charleston coach. Like, I don't know how much a Pat Kelsey would fire me up if I'm uh, an Arkansas I fan. would not fire me I up. I feel like I've hired Stan Heath again. But yeah, I mean, they, that's, the, that's the thing. You really roll the dice with some of these guys. And, uh, you know, if you're Arkansas, you can't get in that situation. You did it with, what, Pelfrey. You did it with Stan Heath. Yeah, that's right. Um, even the Mike Anderson, it just, you know, that seemed like it was going to be a slam dunk. And that's the only thing that concerns me about Arkansas um, but again, Musselman did get them to back-to-back elite eight. I wonder if every program like Arkansas that comes open now calls Jay Wright. Would you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I really don't know. We've said this before. I don't know if he left Villanova because he did not want to deal with NIL, period, or if he left Villanova because he did not want to deal with Villanova's NIL, having to coach in that climate with the type of NAIL you're yeah, going to be and, able to And that's over. the unknown. You know, if he misses coaching, then obviously he might come back. But at the same time, you've got two national championships in a three-year span. You are viewed as the greatest coach in Villanova history. Um, do you want to come back and, and build another program like that? I think it would be an easy build for Jay Wright. I mean, there are some names you really couldn't go wrong on. You know, I think Hurley, I think Beard, I think Wright – um, I, th- I guarantee you every big program gauges Brad Stevens. Just see where he is. And Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan, Donovan yeah, yeah. Both those guys. And and you may never coax one of those guys back to the college game, but I think everybody asks. All right, let's do four downs. It is presented by our friends at Slice. Four great locations for four downs. Yeah, and the newest location, uh, make sure you check that out. It is in Edgewood right there on the corner of Broadway and uh, Oxmoor. Get in and see the Pajaya Brothers. The late Jeff Pajaya created this incredible concept in Lakeview of Slice. It has grown five locations now. Lakeview, Vestavia, Crestline Park, Montevallo, and now Edgewood. Local pizza, local ingredients. For more information, SliceBirmingham.com. First down. Best team in Texas, Cowboys or Texans? Well, um, obviously the record told you last year it was the Cowboys, but I thought the Texans, you know, down the stretch played phenomenal football. They've only gotten better, presumably, with Stephon Diggs. I mean, this coming year, I want to say the Texans. You made the point the other day, though. The AFC is a weird division where – or the AFC South, excuse me, where – like a team will have a really so good year, then they take a huge step backwards. Tennessee did it. Jacksonville did it. You wonder if Houston's going to do it next. Yeah, and I, I think they have built something really good. I've got to go with the Cowboys. I mean, if I could give you one quarterback right now, Dak or C.J. Stroud? Oh, it's only one year with C.J. Stroud. I want to say yeah. C.J. Stroud, I, but it's only yeah. one year. I think I would take C.J., yeah. but I think most people probably would take the proven I mean, commodity over the years, although Dak, not really good when it comes to big moments. And he it. loses his temper when the Real Housewives show up. Who does? Which one? Dak. Remember, he thumps the table. Oh, yeah. yeah. uh, Was that all staged, you think? No, he was mad. It was a uh, DirecTV commercial. (laughs) Oh, that's right. It was. Do do you remember when Terrell Owens had the desperate housewife jump in his arms and they got crushed for that? Yep. Do you remember that Monday Night Football? I do, yeah. Which one was? was, was, Was it Nicolette Sheridan? I think it was. I uh, maybe they picked up a I think she one disrobed time. and jumped in his arms. Yeah, yeah. Disrobed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Second down. Uh, okay, let's get into uh, little hoops. Um, in five years, who will we have more conversations about? Zach Eady or North Carolina State head coach Kevin Keats? Oh, z- what? You, all right. So in five years, it's interesting you ask that because – his Zach Eady's contract's going to be gone. Yeah, well, but his spot in the NBA is really unknown. It's unknown. He does not shoot at all from outside. He's had two three-point attempts his entire career. And any more, any big man, the going are the days of Patrick Ewing, right? And maybe even Shaquille O'Neal. Now, not to say team wouldn't take a shack yeah, on I mean, Patrick Ewing, but they just, a big man's Jokic expected to shoot. is what you want in a big man yep. now, and he can do absolutely everything. Yep. I mean, it's a guy that if I needed him to play point guard, he could play he can point play guard. Point. Yep. And that's and that is not Zach Eady at all. So I have always wondered about his spot in the NBA, and I've not looked at any mock drafts. I don't know where anybody's got him going. Yeah, where I, well, I was looking for this Bronny thing, um, and I'll pull that in one I second. I think he averaged five points but, a game this year. There's no way he gets drafted. But do you think 
Kevin Keats is going to be a name that we're going to be talking about. I mean, I would think if so. If your question was five years from now, is Zach Eady on an NBA roster? Is Kevin Keats still the coach at NC State? Which one are you taking? I'm taking Zach Eady on an NBA roster. So probably the answer to your question is Zach Eady. Yeah, I would agree with that. Third down. Okay, more points this weekend. Caitlin Clark, or actually Caitlin Clark tonight, or anyone in tomorrow's Final Four matchups in Phoenix. I'd go Caitlin Clark. I mean. I don't know. I don't follow the women's game enough to know what UConn's defense is like on the women's side. Again, they're shorthanded right now. This, so. this, I mean, Caitlin Clark, she scores like 40 points a game, doesn't she? And I think she's, she's averaging the, the short three-point line tonight or the long <laughs> yeah, three-point line. I, I think she's court. averaging 34 right now in this tournament, I think. I mean, do you think anybody in this Final Four scores 34 points? I could see Zach Eady. Um, Sears, I could Sears see... may have to. No. Yeah, I think Edie's probably your only About guy. About the only one, yeah. Um, so I would say Caitlin Clark. I would have her. If you gave me all six Final Four games, Caitlin Clark will be the highest scorer in any of those six. That would be my answer. Fourth down. Maybe a little more difficult here. Clark's points tonight against UConn or Alabama three-point attempts tomorrow. Now, I could be wrong on this. I think Alabama's most threes they've attempted was against Purdue earlier this I year. Th- what did I say? It was 42, wasn't it? was 46. It? 46? I would say more Alabama three-point attempts. I just don't think Alabama is going to... I, I don't think they're going to try to play in the paint, and I think it's just going to be a barrage of threes. I think it's going to be more Alabama threes. Yeah. But I wouldn't feel great about it. I mean, I, I just I could see Alabama just an absolute. Wouldn't you think a barrage of threes? Yeah, yeah. You want a fifth down? Sure. We got a good celebrity birthday. Nope, we don't. Oh, Clearly not. Down. How can we shut up? Clearly uh, not. Believe it or not, today is we we heard it was National Deep Dish Pizza Day. Okay. It's Caramel Day too, but it's I also love caramel. National Nebraska Day. If I asked you the best all time Husker, not named Tommy Frazier. Tommy Frazier. Um. I mean, Rogier, Mike Rogier was going to be a guess. He didn't he win a Heisman? Did he? Yeah, I think he did. Nadamakan Sue was incredible, but that was a lot. Will, Will Shields was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Irving Fryer was people forget was he the was the number, number one, one overall yeah. for the yeah. New England Patriots. Yeah, he ended up playing for the Dolphins. Darren Erstad. Yeah, he was a uh, all Big Twelve baseball player yeah. and a uh, great punter. I mean, in his day, Eric Crouch was incredible. Oh, yeah. He just couldn't, you know, it didn't translate to the NFL. He tried to play defensive back in the NFL. Scott Frost was really good. Yeah. I think I would probably go Will Shields. You're not going to go Ndamukong Su? I said Ndamukong Su, but Rockstar, that kind of gets remembered. Like, he had a good season, and he finished, like, November, he had an incredible month. Do you remember that? Yeah. And that was when everybody started talking Heisman because he had all those sacks late in the year. Am I wrong? Did he not play for the Rams? Lions, Dolphins, and Bucks. I don't know about the Bucks. I know he played for the Dolphins. Yeah, I know he played for the Rams. And he played for the Bucks. And for the Lions. Yep. Did he? So he oh, played yeah. for all four of our uh, teams. By the way, uh, oh, Lawrence Phillips, Nicholas says, I mean, it gets. That was really one or two good years. Yeah, but it, they were good ones. And the Rams took him fourth overall. Um, I am seeing the first mock draft I pulled, they've got Zach Eady going 17th. Right. I mean, he is going to have to get an outside shot. Yeah, boy, at 17, I can't just have him hanging out the paint. Yeah, it seems a little high. Yeah, it does feel high. They've got Mark Sears going 28th in the first round. So if you're an Alabama fan, probably not what you want to see. Yeah, you don't want Sears in the first round. No. <laughs> so you'd rather him come back. Am, have you been to Nebraska? When you were in the Jayhawk League, did y'all go to Nebraska any? We went to Omaha. Okay, so barely in Nebraska. Yeah. So I, I'm probably the only one on the show that's been deep in the bowels of Nebraska. Did y'all go through Nebraska on your bus trip? Well, Omaha was the last... Uh, I don't know, uh, where's, where's the, uh, Lincoln was the, I think it, Omaha or Lincoln was the last time. Okay, top so the you weekend, probably spent some time there. Freezing. I, I, um. Great show, though. Good people out there, salt of the earth people. I do not desire to go back to Nebraska. No, I don't really either. I mean, it's, again, Nebraska, much like Kansas, way too much wind. Like, I would rather have rain than wind. I don't know how you guys feel yeah, on that. Yeah, we went to Wichita, and I think, like, that was one of the uh, windiest cities we've ever yeah. been to. Uh, Janai Broom, 52nd overall to the uh-huh. Indiana Pacers here. Yeah. Um, no, if I'm Broom, him leaving. Broom, I'm coming back. I'm not even rolling the dice on that. And uh, Bronny not getting drafted, yeah. at least in this one mock draft. Uh, yeah, so Nebraska, not a place out. A lot of snow and ice when I was there, if you'll remember. 
Uh, that cold. is four downs. It was definitely cold. Four downs presented by Slice, SliceBirmingham.com. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's abundantly clear Janai Broom's coming back. I don't think anybody thought any different about that. And, and here's another uh, second mock draft. So they have got, and this started, we were talking about Zach Eady and his, his draft potential. They've got Eady falling to the second round, early second. Um, I don't see any Mark Sears you know, Sears, though, They've got Broom going 50, uh, 55 to the Lakers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see any Sears here. And, again, there is no Bronny James, which is not a surprise. Yeah, I mean, I know the UConn. We were joking about the UConn podcast, calling him a munchkin. Sears is listed at 6'1". I think he's probably six foot six one. So, I mean, having stood pretty close to him, I think he's somewhere in that neighborhood. A six foot point guard in the NBA, you yeah. you, you got to be something else. Got to be special. And, you know, yeah. you heard the, the comp from Richard Hendricks earlier this week on Jalen Brunson. A lot of people are saying that. Well, Jalen Brunson taking over that game last night late. I mean, I I just don't see that from Sears at this level. Brunson's he's just a bigger guy. Sears he looks a legit, thick. but he looks a yeah. legit six two. And Sears, I think he's more six feet. Now you said you stand, stood next. No, to him. I, I stood next to him. I'm six one. I mean, I didn't go back. You know, the old back to back with a hand, but he felt like six foot to me. I mean, just standing next to him, I I think he's above six yeah. because that was the thing with Jelly Walker we were talking about last year. I don't think there's a single player in the NBA under six feet. Well, right I think now. there might be one or two. Is there one or two? Yeah. At the time last year, I don't think there was one. But but that would absolutely be it. Yeah. I mean, you know, Muggsy Bogues and Spud Webb were incredible, but you just don't get a lot of those in the NFL. Yeah, and to Bronny the, James, uh, NBA, excuse me. here is what le- at least my theory is. The kid's always going to have money. I mean, his dad's a billionaire. We talked about that this week. So if you're Bronny, if you do want to play with your dad, this is the year to come out. You're not going to get drafted. You make sure Rich Paul, who represents you and your dad, you make sure you sign with, if it's the Lakers, then you sign a, you know, um, a free agent deal with the Lakers, and you hope to make that roster. Are, and you, I'm okay, sure, are you okay with the Lakers doing that? I mean, look, the Lakers, people are talking about them making noise. They're still trying to navigate their way into the postseason this such year. Such a proud franchise yeah. to do a bit it, like that. It, it really is, but, I mean, LeBron's got that much control. He does. I mean, because a lot of people thought when this played out, it would be LeBron being done at the Lakers, going somewhere in free agency on the deal. You draft yep. Bronny, I'll come to you in free agency, and we'll we'll have a year together. And maybe, maybe the Lakers do that. Maybe they're like, hey, we're not going to do it here, and LeBron goes somewhere else, and part of his deal on going somewhere else and selling a bunch of tickets and still being highly productive as he knocks on the door of 40, you know, maybe that is part of it. We're going to take your son. Um, I mean, if LeBron and his son are playing together, I mean, what are those tickets? That's a high price ticket. No, it's a high price ticket, especially if it's a market that hasn't had LeBron. I mean, it's a good ticket in L.A., but, I mean, just give me a random franchise. Um, not Cleveland. He's played in Cleveland. He's played in Miami, Minnesota. If well, Timber- Minnesota's too good. Too good, okay. Yeah. That's true. Well, give me I mean, a Portland. franchise. Let's Portland. go Portland. So if Portland did that, I mean, Portland would sell out a bunch of games just to see LeBron. Or how about the Spurs with Wimby? You know, the record isn't good. Wimby looks like he is going to be the next big, big, big thing in the NBA. I'd love to see the video of somebody in the Spurs organization going to Pop and selling him on this idea. Hey, we're going to do a little circus sideshow. But, you know, Popovich has coached LeBron before in Olympic competition, and maybe Pop would like to coach Oh, I don't think knows? the LeBron aspect of it at all. I think it's we're also going to have to draft his son, and he's going to have to play yeah, his Pop son. might be like, hey, we'll give him three minutes a night. <laughs> He, t- he turns it over. Those are those minutes are going to drop. I'll make sure LeBron's yeah. on the floor for those three minutes. Yeah. I, I'd love to see Pop's reaction to that one. Um, hey, mybookie.ag is sending Dunaway and Little T. They're about to head to the plane right now and get all the way out there to Phoenix for the national championship. The final four, Alabama and UConn, Purdue and NC State. It is all presented by mybookie.ag. Code next round when you sign on at mybookie.ag. You get that sign-on bonus, win once with it. It is yours and yours forever. You can bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag. Don't forget, code next round and see all the content from Dunaway and LT or Dunaway and Little T at the Final Four at Next Round Live, courtesy of MyBookie.ag. More of the next round after this. Take the next round anywhere you go with official Next Round gear. Buy yours today at nextround.store. 
Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about our friends at Gutter Cap. Gutter Cap's that patented aluminum cover system that fits over most existing gutters to keep out debris and eliminate that gutter cleaning. It's back with a lifetime warranty, almost 20 year service record right here in Birmingham. Stay off that dangerous ladder forever. 45% off the retail price now if you call guttercapbirmingham.com. Call my good friend Chris Stewart now, 205 823 2212. Cap it, don't snap it, it's Gutter Cap. Man, I love a good meal. I'm Jim Dunaway. A good meal is what you get with my friend Sterling at Champy's Chicken on Highway 119 in Alabaster. We're talking great southern fried chicken, wonderful sides, hand-cut chicken fingers, poor boys, and those Mississippi Delta recipe tamales. You've got a perfect menu for everybody. Champy's Chicken is perfect for watching the big game or taking a meal to the lake house, down to the coast, or stay in the restaurant and dine in in a great atmosphere. It's all made fresh to order right there on 119 in Alabaster, Champy's Chicken. You could win a Cadillac CT5 or your share of $25,000 in free play and cash at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. The more you visit, the more chances you have to win. Play the latest, most exciting games around with fun bonuses and big jackpots. You can be a winner, too. Come win your share during the Cadillac CT5 and $25,000 giveaway at Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Drawings April 5th and 6th. Located off I-459, exit 31, Derby Parkway. Must be 21 or older, must be present to win. The next round golf card is here. It's your chance to play four area golf courses for just 99 bucks. Get 18 holes plus a cart at Limestone Springs, Cross Creek, the Meadows, and the newly renovated Woodward Golf Club, presented by the Urology Centers of Alabama. That's a value of $247 for just 99 bucks. Or get the next round deluxe golf card for $119. That gets you all four courses with cart, plus an exclusive next round golf t-shirt, koozie, golf tees, and a sticker. There are no restrictions. The card is good through October of 2024. Supplies are limited, so get your golf card now at nextround.store. Let's face it, a home is one of the most powerful assets you can have, and our friends at Mortgage Right want to help you build wealth through home ownership. Mortgage Right is all about providing competitive rates, a variety of loan products, and a multitude of resources for a seamless home buying experience. They treat their borrowers like family and are always looking to bring more happy homeowners under their roof. See more by visiting mortgageright.com slash TNR today and start living. That's mortgageright.com slash TNR. NMLS 2239 Equal Housing Lender. The road to the Indy 500 runs through Birmingham, April 26th through 28th. The fastest IndyCar drivers in the world, Castro Navis, Dixon, and New Garden, will put their skills to the test with one goal in mind, victory. Witness country music superstar Riley Green as Grand Marshal give the most iconic command in racing. Start your engine! Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix powered by Amherst at the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now. We continue on the next round when Little T gets back after uh, doing all the heavy lifting with Dunaway there. We're going to have to send her to Woodhouse State Spa. I think she's going to have earned that, wouldn't you think? Ah, uh, look, she's been before. If you want yep. the gift of luxury, you can get it from Birmingham's Best Day Spa, the Woodhouse Day Spa, located at the Summit Shopping Center's right off of Highway 280. Get in and see Stuart and that incredible staff. Make sure you tell them the next round sent you. They've got a menu of over 70 options, including massages, body treatments, skin care, waxing, nail services. Woodhouse Day Spa voted America's Best Day Spa since 2009. You can order that special person gift online 24-7. Birmingham.WoodhouseSpas.com. That's Birmingham.WoodhouseSpas.com. 30 years ago today, do I, uh, Rockstar shaking his head. He remembers. I, it's one of those deals where I can remember exactly where I was Me when too. I heard the news. I was at Wald Park in Vestavia. Young Reed was having a, uh, I don't want to say Little League game. He was in the upper fields there. So he was, well, yeah, I guess he was probably 13 then. We, we talk about it all the time. Back in the day, and, and kids today will not experience this, there was this guy on MTV named Kurt Loder. And, when you would and, hear that, was it? <laughs> when it was breaking news. And Kurt Loder would come on and he would do a news update on MTV periodically. That's and how it was, I found out about Biggie getting shot, Tupac, well, it was, uh, but it was River reg- Phoenix. It, it was reg- regularly scheduled. Like you knew it was just MTV News Update, a new album coming out uh, from so-and-so. And it would just be like two or three news stories. But there was the rare occasion where you got the unscheduled breaking news and Kurt Loder popped up and it was always bad. There always. was never good from it. Always and it was bad. always someone in the music industry. And this time, 30 years ago today, it was... 
I mean, I think at the time I would have to say Kurt Cobain was the most, I mean, the front of one of the most, maybe the top band of the day in yeah, Nirvana. They were, they were on, uh, they were on top of the world. Yeah, I think in 92, 93, they were on top of the world. Um, 94, he was having some struggles. He had been in rehabs, uh, suicide attempts. Um, they weren't really doing anything. And uh, this happened. And uh, I had a broken collarbone. And I remember I was at home from school because I broke my collarbone the day before, running over the handlebars of my bike, going to a free Taco Bell day uh, with a friend. <laughs> And I saw that in my sling, and I was just like, that's that's insane. Um, and you see all the vigils, and then you, well, with Courtney Love, who took the stage, and she read that his whole suicide note in front of like all these people on a microphone, which oh. was insane. And so, told him to F off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, she, so awkward. Like, she was a little uh, under the influence on that. Oh, you think like, maybe? Just, it was just sad that you see all these teenagers. like just. It was just a sad scene. But, yeah, like that's a, that Nirvana Unplugged album, which they didn't release until after he died, which is crazy. Uh, was one of like it was a game changer for me. But you know, it's like Biggie and Tupac, and people still explore. You know, who really was behind this? And I know P Diddy's getting thrown out there now. Yeah. Seems like anything you can get uh, P Diddy on, um, everybody's doing a drive by on that guy, and probably deservingly so. Um, but Kurt Cobain, you know, I watch these documentaries, and you know, how involved was Courtney Love? I mean, as you mentioned, Rocky had already tried suicide multiple times, but there is this conspiracy theory that. You know, he was killed. And, and there are some interesting angles when you really dive, do a deep dive into well, some how, of those documentaries. How has she been, like, how has she exploded? His whole still, like, she's tried to be an actress and she's not, she's got a couple of films. She was great in Larry Flint, but, like, has she seriously benefited I mean, from the, the only way she would kill him would be for insurance money, right? I mean, what else would the, what would the and he did motivation lot, be? He, he was not like a rich rock star. No. I mean, but, but Everything but, he had was pretty, pretty but, much to heroin. But he, she inherited the rights Right. Along with Grohl and other members. and That became a feud, too. Where she, yeah, she I know Grohl to, and her hated each other. Yeah, because they refused to, they wanted to release all this unreleased stuff and, like, box sets of, like, anniversary stuff, but she wouldn't do it because she wanted more of the money. And they're like, we just want to do this for the fans. And she's like, no. And they finally made up, and they were there when Nirvana, and then she was there, I think, when the Foo Fighters got into the Hall of Fame. So I think they've... Uh, Premended their relationship. Like uh, Dave Grohl turned out okay. What happened to Novoselic? I mean, did he just Novoselic ran for Congress? I knew that, but he ne- he got out of music though, right? No, he's, I think he's still in music, but I think he's just he's one of those guys. He was like the shy guy. Yeah. Um, he still plays. He played a couple songs on a Foo Fighter record. Um, I don't know exactly what he does. He's just real like he's just kind of faded out. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad. Kurt Cobain, thirty years ago today, took his life, and uh, as we said. Kurt Loder delivered a lot of bad news over uh, his career. I think for me, that was the one that was probably the most shocking at the time, just because I was, I think, a, what year was it? 90, 94. Says, 94. I was a senior in high school. Yeah, to uh, me, though, um, 97, 96, 97, the news of Tupac and Biggie. Well, it's just with the, with the Cobain thing, it's just astounding how many people Eddie Vedder is the literally the only one standing from uh, the uh, Seattle singers yeah, Chris Cornell Lane Staley uh, Kurt Cobain uh, Mark Mike Lanigan from uh, the Screaming Trees all these guys are gone yeah, well, a, he, a lot Eddie of drugs in that last well, you know, a lot of drugs in that conversation it's, right? it's yeah. suicide a lot of yeah, drugs yeah, suicide. But, unfortunate. But, but the Chris Cornell you know there's a theory out there that he didn't commit suicide I'm sure you've seen yeah. this oh. again I just don't know what, what, what was the uh, what was the upshot there on somebody killing Chris Cornell I, that's that's uh, unfortunate memory, but yeah, 30, Laura said in the chat room, "How has that been thirty years?" I mean, that is it is crazy to think it's been that long. Goes like it that. does go like that. I remember too. Not only do I remember Kurt Loder delivering the news, but I remember. I and I don't know if you guys had this. I think I've brought this up before. There was uh, we had this. There was this news like operation that delivered it was tv one or something like that channel one channel one yeah channel in like one your classroom in your classroom yeah, it was like a two minute news series it was a two minute yeah. news series but they put tvs in every classroom Launched, uh, anderson cooper yeah that's right yeah yeah but they put tvs in every classroom yeah, i don't remember that yeah th- so we had tvs at Saxon. and i remember they would turn them on every day and they would do a little news update and kurt cobain was in that news yeah. and uh, i remember one of the girls i was miss haynes was my uh, homeroom teacher and i remember one of the girls saying this is so sad he shot himself in the head three times I was like, get the job done, man. <laughs> I, was, I think you're probably going to want to think about that sentence yeah. before you keep saying it. But Was it as big as the, uh, what is the gas pump? 
uh, where you're pumping your gas and you oh, get the gas. Oh, Cheddar News. Yeah, Cheddar, Cheddar News. News. Maria Menounos giving us yeah. some facial expressions. <laughs> hey, still, got, still got a gig, though. Yeah. Maria does. I mean, do, do, do you get breaking news, though? You oh, think Cheddar anybody's news? like, damn. Also like a soccer goal. Like, just randomly show a soccer goal in the crowd going, well, nothing, no no context to it. Yeah. A random, like, dunk from uh, <laughs> Devin Booker. Like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> um. Sooneret says Tupac was shocking because he seemed invincible. You're a big Tupac guy. Yeah. It, it, well, here's the thing: when he was shot, then he, um, you know, he didn't die for like six, seven days afterwards. So you thought there was a shot. Pardon a the chance, pun. Yeah. yeah. That he was actually going to pull through, and um, yeah. And then it was just then it was the next march, and you hear about veggie and then i remember quincy jones at some award ceremony he's like what in the hell is going on like it's one thing to rap about killing each other but when you're actually out there and we've got this west coast east coast feud where people are actually dying it's a little ridiculous no it is it is and and he was right about that i have seen the tupac autopsy photos at least what it's supposed to be i remember that was one of the big things on rotten.com Rotten. 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 yeah Rotten.com had the Tupac autopsy photos, and that was, I don't know if that's how they launched, but it was early for them and being able to get those. That was pre-TMZ. That was yeah. when Rotten.com got stuff. That is stuff. not the worst thing you could have gotten on that website. That oh, no, website. they had terrible stuff. But that oh, was the God. one that I think really launched on yeah. mainstream. I yeah. used to go. I went to that website way too much. I don't know what it was. It was I didn't. I went to it. I know that's hard to believe with all my dark algorithms I yeah. get. But uh, yeah, only uh, I mean there a was couple of times. like something would happen. He said, "I bet Rotten.com's got the uh, got the photos of it." And like nine times out of ten, they would. I don't mm -hmm. know how they didn't make it, and TMZ did. Like TMZ became Rotten.com. Well, because TMZ kind of tamed it down a little bit. Like Rotten.com yeah. was no holes barred. Like in, oh yeah, yeah. like here's some like if I go to <laughs> X, uh, here are some of mine that jump up. Um, I have got morbid knowledge. Okay. Morbid Knowledge has got some wicked stuff on there, by the way. Um, I have got, um, and I don't know how do they find me because I don't, I don't like go to these websites. Is it just if you click one time? Yeah, one time they're like, oh, I bet he'd like this. What does that mean? Are if you, you click I mean, you on watch, James Spann one time, are you getting nothing but weather? A lot of, a lot of weather. <laughs> you watch one beheading, Lance, and it's just going to be all beheadings. After yeah, that. actually, I'm not getting a lot right here, but uh, yeah, there's some yeah. kind of fight website. Oh or, yeah. Yeah, couple a uh, couple sponsors here, and uh, when we return, I'm going to ask Lance a question on the fly and get his gut reaction to it. The road to the Indy 500 runs through Birmingham. It is April 26th through the 28th. Fastest Indy car drivers in the world, Castro Navis Dixon and New Garden, will put their skills to the test with one goal in mind. That is victory. Witness country music superstar Riley Green as the Grand Marshal give the most iconic command in racing: start your engines. It is the Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix, powered by Amherst, the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now. That question on the fly for Lance after he tells us about Dr. B. Yeah, my man, Dr. B, uh, when I started to thin out, when we started this venture, asked around, everybody said, Dr. Beckenstein is the guy you need to call. I set up the consultation, went in to see Dr. B. And uh, since that moment, more than two years ago, my hair has doubled in thickness. I do the non-invasive treatment 30 minutes, three times a week on the couch. That is it right now. For more than 20 years, women and men have turned to Dr. Beckenstein for a range of cosmetic and reconstructive procedures. He will use that experience, his advanced training, and genetic testing to help his patients fully understand the procedures they are considering. You see Dr. B over there. If you're watching us right now, make this phone call. Schedule the consultation. See if it's right for you. 205-319-0316 or t3hair.net. Call the next round now at 205-734-0923. Legacy Credit Union has the ultimate game changer for your finances. With engaged checking, you can earn 3% APY on balances up to $15,000. You heard correctly, 3% APY. But it's not just about scoring with high yields. With engaged checking, you can get paid up to two days early. That means your paycheck, Social Security, tax refund, you name it, you get it early. So stop sitting on the sidelines and get in the game with engaged checking. Sign up today at LegacyCreditUnion.com or visit any nine Greater Birmingham area branches. APY is annual percentage yield. Terms and conditions may apply. See Credit Union for details. Federally insured by the NCUA. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. 
Storm season is here. Make sure you have a plan of action in place right now. Greg from Pell City and Storm Restoration Roofing should be your first call when storms hit. Insurance companies love working with Storm Restoration Roofing because of Greg Nelson's name and reputation in the industry. When storms hit, call Greg Nelson. He's local, 205-542-3531. He's the home of the free no-cost roof inspection. Greg from Pell City on Facebook, 205 542 3531, it's Storm Restoration Roofing. Stop by the New York Butcher Shop and pick up the finest in certified Angus Prime Beef steaks and burgers, premium pork chops, ribs, and all-natural chicken cut to order just for you. Their chef-prepared entrees and side dishes are the perfect dinner-to-go choice for your family and are ready to heat at home. With a great selection of fine wines and desserts, the New York Butcher Shop is your one-stop dinner shop. Two locations to serve you, Cahaba Heights and on Highway 119 in Greystone, the New York Butcher Shop, rare quality, well-done service. Hey, let me tell you about our friends at Urology Centers of Alabama. Compassionate and comprehensive urological care with 35 physicians, 17 locations across Alabama. Their patient-centered approach to all of your urological needs. Remember, they've got that new men's health center. It is beautiful, helping men with a wide range of sensitive male issues in a comfortable environment. You can always go online, visit urologycentersalabama.com, schedule an appointment with one of their many urologists today. Hang out with the next round on the go. Whether you're driving to work, running errands, sitting on the beach, or you just need a break from the real world, we can keep you company. Check out the next round, Mystery Fifth Hour, and our other shows on your favorite podcast app. We'll meet you there. Is Coke Zero Sugar the best Coke ever? Man, that's a bold question. But it's got that irresistible taste to back it up. One thing's for sure, when you've got an irresistible tasty match like zero sugar and zero calories, something sensational is bound to happen. It's too bad you can't taste it with your ears because this Coke Zero Sugar tastes amazing. Truthfully, it's hard to put into words, and that's my job. You'll have to take a taste for yourself. Coke Zero Sugar, best Coke ever? Jim Dunaway, Lance Taylor, Ryan Brown and Rockstar. Live from the Birmingham Racecourse Casino Studios, the next round, presented by Bud Light, is on now. Another hour of the next round, Dunaway on his way to the airport and in the skies to Phoenix. He will be with us live. We'll be live Saturday right around 4 o'clock Central, by the way, Saturday, yeah. uh, if you want to check us. And I was just texting with EG. You know, she's going to be in Tuscaloosa yep. doing some coverage. Uh, she is trying to twist my arm to go with her. Um, I can't decide. Like, I think it's going to be insane win or lose. I just don't know if I want to get in the middle of that. When you told me you might not get back home till 1, that was when I was like, yeah, I don't think I'd do it. Well, here's the thing. So if we want to go down and you want to watch um, some of NC State Purdue, in order to get down and get situated, you probably need to leave at 3.30. Is that yeah. sound about right? Yeah. And I would think the Bama game is not going to tip until 9.15. Yeah. So if it's yeah, done. Yeah, maybe not quite that late. I think the advertised start time is 8. No, wait a minute. It's 8.07. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's just say it tips at 8.30. So. Yeah. 1030, uh, get a lot of video, some sound. You're out of Tuscaloosa if you're lucky by 1130 or midnight. Yeah, it's 1 o'clock. Yeah. It's, it's a no, full, full day. 749 is the advertised tip time. I was thinking 807. So it'll be, be a little after 8 o'clock. That's probably yeah. about right, though. Yeah, about 8 o'clock. Uh, so there you go. You can see us on uh, wherever you're getting this show on video. You'll see us uh, Saturday, 4 o'clock with uh, Dunaway and Little T from out in Phoenix. This hour presented by Champies. Sterling and the crew have thrown the doors open there at Champies. Champies World Famous Fried Chicken. ChampiesChicken.com. Go get a great lunch there. Those chicken fingers, pull boys, Mississippi Delta tamales, great sides. ChampiesChicken.com. Uh, down on TV, too, uh, I am looking at Pat McAfee. He is live in Philadelphia for uh, WrestleMania, which will be Saturday and Sunday. They are doing that outdoor at Lincoln Financial Field. I was talking with Tim Melton in Lunsford, hosts of the uh, Meltdown yesterday the highs are going to be in the low 50s it's just kind of weird to think uh, of wrestling with people yeah. outside the 50s but that's that's philadelphia weather i'm sure their fans will be all about it and uh bunch of roughnecks in philly it's a dirty disgusting town I you don't, don't like philadelphia so. no it's got some history there but not a place that i would want to post up right um that is one thing that i can 
honestly say I respect the athleticism of those guys and the yeah. showmanship, but I will never get into wrestling. I'll have it on a side TV. I mean, there won't be much on opposite the Final Four, but I'll have that on a side TV. I watched it between games last year. Yeah, I would much rather watch – UConn and Iowa women's tonight. This is me saying it, okay. Mr. Yeah, misogyny. Wow. Yeah. Um, I would rather watch that than, wa- than watch wrestling. All right, here's the question on the fly for you. Question is this on the one the that you've been teasing? Well, yeah. I mean, I just I came, I, I decided I was going to ask you. I thought it was the what happened 30 years ago. No, 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 no. I apologize. I changed, I changed pass on you. I told you I was going to give you a question on the fly, and then I decided I'd go 30 years today. I don't I, – uh, Dunway has a very structured. My mind is not quite as structured as his, so a lot of times I'm just I'm. I'm Would you scattered. want to live in his mind? I don't know if you ever saw. It. I know you didn't see it. I don't know if Rocky saw it. Spike Jones did. Being John Malkovich. No, I thought it was a great movie though. Yeah, it was a great movie. But would you guys want to be in Dunaway's head? Um, no. no, there was a TV show one time called Herman's Head. Do you remember no, that show? Comedy show. A comedy show. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I I don't want to be in most anybody's head. To be a lot honest, of stress in that head. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Um. After this weekend, so everybody's back on the table here. Next SEC team to make a Final Four is? A Tennessee. No, no, no. I'm not saying their first Final oh. Four. I'm saying the next oh, SEC team in a Final Four. Now, Tennessee's never been. Yeah. So Boy, the next. The, uh, there's only four SEC schools that haven't been, and I Tennessee know. being one of them, that is just a. Well, they've been very close. Kick to the junk. Um, so, so you put everybody back on the table now. When remember, Texas and Oklahoma yep. are coming to the league. The next SEC team back in or for the first time in a Final Four? I am going to say that it is Alabama. So I said after this weekend yeah. to take that answer, yeah. you know, everybody, well, Alabama's the next one in the Final Four. So even after this weekend, you think Alabama will make a return trip? They've never been I until know, this weekend. I know. Well, look, Tennessee's never been. They'll make a return trip before anybody else okay, goes back. Programs that are in great spots that, right the, now. This Alabama, how- Auburn, Tennessee. Yep. I can't put Kentucky there. Look, I know that can flip quickly, but just based on not only the talent Calipari's had there the last few years, but these early round exits are really disturbing. But, I mean, I'll point out, you know, Bruce Pearl's record in the NCAA tournament outside of that one Final Four run is not great. Yeah, but I still, would, Auburn. I would still consider them in a great spot right oh, now. Oh, I don't disagree with you. I'm just – I'm going to play devil's advocate on these. Yeah. Um, if, if I told you Chris Beard is the Arkansas coach, how quickly do you get to Arkansas? Uh, quickly. Like, I think you, within you two or three him, years. Yeah. He, he could do it. I don't fear Missouri, Vanderbilt, never been. Arkansas right now is kind of lame duck. Uh, Mike White at Georgia, they didn't even – don't even think they really dressed out the other night in the NIT. Uh, but that's not a that's that's not a scare. Ole Miss, even with Chris Beard, don't think so. Chris Jans is really good. Don't think so. State's don't feel been, it with LSU. State's been before. A&M. Florida's interesting. I like Todd Golden I wondered a lot. how long it would take you to get to Todd Golden in Florida because I like what he's building there. Yeah, I think – and look, Lamont Paris, your SEC coach of the year, great job this year. I want to see a little bit more. But I would say programs at least that I feel great about where they are, Tennessee, Auburn, Bama, and Florida. Okay. Hold that thought. Okay. NASCAR coming back to the Talladega Super Speedway, 877-GO-TO-DEGA, 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Uh, the Geico 500 weekend coming up. April 19th through the 21st. We are very excited about it. Uh, You can go see it for yourself, and you can enhance your experience with the Garage Experience presented by Cool Raid. That is a great way to take in the race there at Talladega. The Geico 500 weekend, if you've never been, you need to do it once in your life. Make it this year. TalladegaSuperSpeedway.com, 877-GO-TO-DEGA. That's TalladegaSuperSpeedway.com, 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Um, I know there's a little back and forth all the time with the Alabama and Auburn fans, but right. Zach, Auburn is in a great spot. Question mark. The tournament played in Auburn the next few years. Look, I know Neville, they're a different animal. A lot of these teams are, but they were 27 and 8 this year. They won the SEC tournament. They were the one SEC team that everybody believed in coming into this tournament. Tournament's out of whack every single year. You really don't know what's going to happen. But to say Auburn's not in a great spot, to me, is kind of insane. Like, I understand that, yeah. that Bruce hasn't done a ton in the postseason, but he did get them to a Final Four. No, they're they're in a the best spot they've ever been in, yeah. period. I mean, Bruce Pearls, they've got the best coach they've ever had, and they're the best spot they've ever been in. It's interesting to me, as you dug through those, you and, – and I reminded you, and you know this, Texas and Oklahoma are about to be in the SEC, and I, I get it that it's probably the coaching at Texas – but Oklahoma is also a program that's been to Final Four. Is Porter Mosier? I don't know how long he's going to be. I, there. I don't know. He just hasn't. He's not. 
and this happens a lot when you go from the mid-major to the big conference. It just is not the same as he had at Loyola in Chicago. He's just not been able to capture that at Oklahoma, and I don't know how long he is for this world. Look, in, in Texas, if Chris Beard was still there, they would be, in my opinion, the alpha of the SEC. It would have been your first immediately. answer. Immediately, yeah. yeah. Like, they might have won the national championship last year. But um, I'm not scared of Texas and Rodney Terry. Uh, Porter Moser, again, um, it's been underwhelming in Oklahoma, so I don't think those two are going to be a factor at least in the next couple of years. But we'll see. I mean, these things turn around quickly. Um, but I think the four that I named are in the best spot, and Kentucky's always in a great spot. Just the fact that you said Alabama so quickly did surprise me. Um, now, again, somebody said Alabama would be back next year. They have never even been. It's crazy to think they would go back-to-back years. But they are going to return a lot of, if not this entire roster, other than Estrada. Okay, let me add, and I'm not comparing – Please hear me clearly when I okay. say I'm not completing. Well, I love it when you have to uh, when you have to do. But you have to do a, dis- a qualifier like that. But when you're looking at Gonzaga, you know when they finally hit their first Final Four, what happened? And again, I'm not saying that Nate Oates is building the uh, East Coast version of Gonzaga, but just looking at Final Four. So their first Final Four, well, they've only been to two, 2017 and it's 2021. Hard. So hard. A ton of Elite Eights. 99, oh, yeah. 15, 17, 19, 21, and 23. And that's poor, right. probably more realistic for an Alabama yeah. or Tennessee. Keep, or Keep that up. So you got Mark Few right there. You got Gonzaga. So give me – so they went to that first Final Four. Give me the next five years after that. And, and, and look at this through the lens of what Alabama fans – Take this. Take this. Yeah, and I think they probably okay. would. give me the next So five. the first one was 17, where really they had a great shot of beating North Carolina. They were the runner-up, their, their first – uh, Final Four. The very next year, Sweet 16. That's a successful year. Yeah. The next year, Elite Eight. Yep. The next year, they were 31-2, and two, and the uh, the tournament got postponed because of COVID. Okay. They would have made noise. Yep. The next year, they were the national runner-up. They so, were undefeated going into that game against Baylor. So, in tournaments, they went Final Four, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four national runner-up. So, already, I don't even care what that fifth year is. Alabama fans would take that today. Well, and then Sweet 16... Yeah, that's five years. So that's a five tournament yeah. window right and there. And then last year was Elite Eight, and they were Sweet Sixteen this year when there was no expectation. I mean, that it's it's amazing what they've been able to do. It really is, and it is such a difficult tournament to advance. And I think if you gave any SEC school, give me the SEC school that wouldn't take that right now. I mean, even Kentucky, Kentucky would. would take. It. Well, I mean, that's, they would. It's kind of what you got with Calipari until the last three years. That's what years. I'm saying. They haven't had that in a yeah. while. I think they'd like to get back to that. And you go to any other SEC school and say, I'll give you that. That's two Final Fours, an Elite Eight, and two Sweet Sixteens. Yeah. Taking a heartbeat. Well, that's a top ten program for yeah. you know five-plus years. Yeah, every school in the SEC would sign up for yep. that right there. Um, that's that's interesting. I didn't know you would go Alabama that quick. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel good about it. I mean, Nate's getting paid like an elite guy. Um I thought it was disturbing how inconsistent they were this year yeah, and and how they decide just to play defense once once you get to the NCAA tournament. But you, you can't question what Nate's done. You just can't. You can't. All right, one more question off that. A reminder, Coca-Cola uh, has got this new spiced flavor, raspberry spiced Coca-Cola. You see the Coca-Cola in the cooler behind me? We've got that raspberry spiced in here. You could try it. Dunaway says it's the taste of the summer. It is. Great Coca-Cola classic flavor you're used to with that raspberry uh, raspberry spiced added in, Coca-Cola spice. Find it at the retailer near you, Coca-Cola spiced. I wonder, like, I mean, so uh, we just talked about Porter Mosier. Rodney Terry, I cannot see him being long-term in either. Texas. Uh, and I'm just going to go on the top programs here, like, because we're talking about the health of these programs. You know, Rick Barnes, I, how old is Rick Barnes, Lance? He's old. He's got to retire soon, right? Well, He's got to I mean, be doing it a put, long put time. Put this in perspective. You know, Dunaway was talking about some of the great Alabama teams that never made deep runs. Yeah. And he goes back to 1987 when you ran into um, Billy Donovan at at um, Providence. Providence, yeah. Yeah, so Barnes was wimp, Wimp's assistant, He was, right? yeah. Yeah, he was and, on Wimp's bench. Yeah, so if you're on Wimp's bench in the 80s. Yeah, you, you've been you, doing it a minute. You've been doing it a little bit. I would think that Rick Barnes, I will say that he is 73 years old. When they, Well, not quite. When the season tips, rarely out of your three-year window here. When the season tips next year, he'll be 70. He turns 70 in July. Okay, well, we're so still going to give you the three-year window. Yeah, yeah, you're close enough. So he'll be 70 when the season tips. I mean, he, he can't do it a ton longer, Rick Barnes. You know, Bruce Pearl... I, I, we've talked about how much time he's got left in him. I don't know. What is Bruce, 63? Uh, 64. 64. 
He just had a birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Coach, a few days yeah, ago. Yeah, I, I think Bruce has got a few years left in him. I mean, if we're saying Rick Barnes to 70, I think Bruce could easily go to 70. Yeah, if he wants to. Yeah, if he wants to. Um, I mean, I, I look at, you know, like we talked about Todd Golden. I think Florida's on the ascension. I am a believer in Todd Golden, yeah, I and I think and, that guy could be there a long time. And it, it kind of reminds me of what you've got with Nate Oates, and Florida can be a great program again, the last NCAA champion to uh, to repeat. So I don't know where – where Golden would go. Like, yeah. Florida, it seems like it can be a destination job. Whoever gets the Arkansas job, if they win there, now I'm saying this as Eric Musselman has just landed in L.A. yesterday, if they win there, they're going to keep that job. Musselman was a weird situation up there. I don't know. Now, I will say that. Now, I, I've heard this. I've heard Musselman, and, and this is so easy to believe, just watching him from the couch or watching him from here and hearing sound bites. Like he was wearing Arkansas out. I could see that. And then I got to dig back through this on Twitter. And I can see just based on the videos, I don't know what USC paid him. It's obviously got to be more money. But I could see in the social media videos, he seems so relieved to yeah. be out of Fayetteville. Debo 90 says, I've heard our rumors are Arkansas has NIL problems. I, I don't know that. I would be so surprised uh, with shocking. the Walton family. I'm and, and it's a bad. It's as close to a basketball school as anything other than Kentucky. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. If you're yeah. an Arkansas fan, would you rather? I mean, how realistic is it that football can really compete with Alabama and Texas and Georgia and LSU and Auburn? I just I don't know if that's realistic. But in basketball, if you went to Arkansas fans, hey, we can get this back to the early Bud Walton days with Nolan Richardson. I think that's a safer bet than football. So it's almost like. You know, if I've got NIL and I've got to keep a Todd Day-like player or I've got to keep a Ryan Mallett-like player, I think I'd rather have the Todd Day. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I, it's I've always viewed Arkansas like Kentucky's definitely a basketball school, and if I had to label one more, I'd make it Arkansas. Yeah, I would too. So I think whoever gets that job can stay there for quite a long time. Um, but, man, that is – I mean, once I get past those guys, I mean, who do you have faith is going to be at a program a long time? Yeah. Cal's not. I think Calabar's no. a And I like time. Buzz Williams, but I do too, A&M's but... just one of those programs. That's that right. It just seems like it's almost like Billy Gillespie did a better job at A&M than Buzz did. Yeah, I would agree. Now, he did it with AC Law, you remember? And that was kind of a borrowed player there. Got a lead eight run. He did. They were Had really AC good team. Law. And I've always liked Buzz Williams, but I just don't know. I don't know what his, his long term will be there. So interesting question. Lance says very quickly, Alabama, the next team I mean, for the look, SEC. I would not feel great about no, it. No, I mean you're not gonna feel good about anybody you bet on there. But look, Alabama, as long as Nate is there with this style, they're gonna be a top twenty five team every single year. Yeah. Uh, don't forget uh, the University of Montevallo. It is the home of the fighting Dunaways there, Jim Dunaway and his wife. Uh, graduates of Montevallo, his daughter there as well. It is a great Southern campus, beautiful, beautiful campus, great value as well. You could schedule a tour or take a virtual tour, montevallo.edu, montevallo.edu for the University of Montevallo. As a reminder, the games are on TBS. If you're looking for it, I can promise you I'm going to get a text about it. Uh, make sure the loved ones in your life know the game is on TBS, not CBS. So yeah, if you start I looking just, this weekend. I don't even, you know, when I was direct TV. I would go to 206 and go up, or I would go to 501 and right. go up. Now, YouTube TV, I just hit it, and it goes straight to my games. Oh, yeah. I don't even know what channel they're on. I don't either. Direct TV stream does the same thing for me. It just gives me my choices, and they're all sports choices, much to my wife's chagrin. What are you on now, Rockstar? Are you on? I'm on YouTube TV. For, YouTube TV? For about ah, 2020, 2019. Yeah. Um, I am... I, I, I'm pretty happy with DirecTV Stream. I did not like DirecTV overall, but DirecTV Stream, for whatever reason, has been fine. Well, the main reason is I don't lose it on rain fade. So TBS is the site of the games, Rockstar. Let your parents know. So people that are TBS. School, waiting for a Big Bang Theory uh, uh, marathon, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah, so that's right. you're going right. to get those notes. TBS, not CBS. Just T a little heads up on that T one. Okay. TBS. Okay. Uh, and uh, WrestleMania Rockstar is on Peacock. All right, got that down too. <laughs> this is the old viewing menu right Ultimate there. Ultimate Warrior coming back. Right? Um, by the way, Andrew says Uzu, Uzi, who you were on for a little bit. I think I see CBS. Him. Yeah. But he says they don't have TNT. How do you have TBS and not TNT on Uzi? I don't know how people actually – I told you the, the, the Uzi was rebuffering nonstop. Right. So I don't know how people But actually, your YouTube TV doesn't, so it wasn't yeah. internet. 
No. It was, now, the, it was I did, the platform. I had uh, four or five TVs going a couple of weeks ago, and, right? it, and it shut yeah, down. Yep, yeah, yeah, that'll happen sometimes. You get so, a lot going on. I am really, really scared about football season, but I've got a plan. What, are you going to make a switch? Well, no, I'm going to take the, uh, the four, like, archaic 32s out, and then I'm going to put one more, like, 65 or 70, so I'll have – 365 or 70s and when i can do the quad box right i'll have 12 12 games going or really just <laughs> do you I'll, think do you think you'll be the future too no i think what i'll do is i'll have the the quad box on two and right. then i'll have one game the the specific game that i really want to zone in on yeah and then i can sample the others do you think you'll uh do you think you'll actually watch any of the games you just have so many on you're like i don't even know what's going on well, in I, of them. i've got really that's good what I, find. I got really good at the i've got six tvs now i got really good at jumping around there and kind right. of focusing on one but really, it's all about sampling the, the score and situations. Well, see, what I see is I look up and I'm like something just happened. They'll give a replay and I'll rewind it and watch it a little bit. Yeah. But then I sometimes forget to catch up. So now I'm way behind on a game. It does, it does get a little confusing. At but times. I would think by the time we get to college football, much like you can actually get creative with your quad box and you can remove an ad. I would think by the time we get to football, you almost would be able to go by channel by channel, anything they're showing and customize your four quad. I would think by September. Do you think so, Rocky? Uh, yeah, I think Dunaway said something where he could do it. Uh, he's what no. He what he wants is I want to be able to do a basketball game and have an episode of Friends over yeah. here. Have yeah. the news. Over that, here, that's the my only game. frustration. We don't need that. That's my only frustration. I liked Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. I thought they did an exceptional job. My only frustration was not being able to customize the quad boxes. Like probably eight times out of ten, they had the quad box I wanted. But sometimes it's just like, I don't want that game yeah. in there. Well, now you can remove that game. Can you? Yeah, so there's there's a, I forgot what the icon is, but you yeah. hit it, and it takes you to that quad box, and then you can remove a game, so it'll take it to three. Right. Or you can even take it down to two, Yeah. and then there are some that you can add back. Yeah. I just got this weird thing, though. If the screen isn't filled, I don't like it, so I got to do the, the quad box. Method, the two-game method's rough. Well, the two-game is, both yeah, of them are squeezed down. Horse. Yeah. Yeah, that's that that bothers me. Yeah, now, Chris might be in a different tax bracket. I like where his head is, though. I bought a video wall controller for my four eighty-five inch TVs, Woo! so I can watch all four as one or each individually. Well worth the money. Yeah, that was our vision back here. Uh, it was Dunaway's vision back here. He, he, he wanted the monitor wall. Hey, don't forget the next round golf cart is back. Your chance to play four area golf courses for just $99, 18 holes of golf and cart at Limestone Springs, Cross Creek, the Meadows, and the newly renovated Woodward Golf Club presented by the Urology Centers of Alabama. $247 value for just $99. Get the next round deluxe golf cart for just $119. That gets you all four courses. Plus cart with uh, an exclusive next round golf t-shirt as well, a koozie, golf tees, and a sticker. No restrictions. The card's good through October 2024. Supplies are limited. Get your golf card now. Nextround.store. That is nextround.store. Alabama, big underdog. What NATO says about that and trash next. Everything Alabama, all the time. Subscribe and set alerts at Roll Tide Pods on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Spring weather is here, and our friends at Hemphill Services are offering a $69 HVAC tune-up plus 10% off any service call when you mention the next round. Call Adam, Chad, and the guys at Hemphill Services. Make sure your HVAC unit is ready to keep up with the changing weather. Hemphill Services, locally owned and operated independent train dealer. The team can service all makes and models. For all of your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs, call Hemphill Services. It's hard to stop a train. 205-229-2090 or HemphillServices.com. That's 205-229-2090. HempHillServices.com. Storm season is here. Make sure you have a plan of action in place right now. Greg from Pell City and Storm Restoration Roofing should be your first call when storms hit. Insurance companies love working with Storm Restoration Roofing because of Greg Nelson's name and reputation in the industry. When storms hit, call Greg Nelson. He's local. 205-542-3531. He's the home of the free no-cost roof inspection. Greg from Pell City on Facebook. 205-542-3531. 3531, it's Storm Restoration Roofing. This hour of the next round is presented by the Birmingham Racecourse Casino. Now featuring seven days of giveaways with your chance to win a share of up to $125,000. The more you visit the Birmingham Racecourse Casino, the more chances you have to win. 
Hey, Lance Taylor from the next round to tell you about one of our favorite places for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That is Hamburger Heaven since 1982. Hamburger Heaven has been serving Birmingham's best hamburgers, cheeseburgers, french fries, hand-spun milkshakes, and sandwiches made fresh to order. All of their ingredients are fresh and prepared daily. This includes their beef, always fresh, never frozen, hand patted each and every day. For breakfast, lunch, or dinner, visit any of the four locations, Highway 280, Irondale, Gardendale, and Homewood. You have all heard of Red Wing Shoes, but what is Red Wing Shoes? It's the place where men buy boots, plain and simple. Who are Red Wing's customers? They are construction workers, warehouse employees, college students, the guy that fixes your AC, the guy at the end of the bar, the IT guy. Red Wing is a father, Red Wing is a son, Red Wing is a cult following shared by all men. A classic comfortable pair of cool boots with a story to tell. What's your Red Wing story? Red Wing Shoe Stores, located in Pelham and Trussville. The road to the Indy 500 runs through Birmingham, April 26th through 28th. The fastest IndyCar drivers in the world, Castro Nevis, Dixon, and Newgarden will put their skills to the test with one goal in mind, victory. Witness country music superstar Riley Green as Grand Marshal give the most iconic command in racing. Start your engine! Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix powered by Amherst at the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now. Start your day online with our website, nextroundlive.com, for the latest videos, podcasts, and college football stories. It's also a great way to stream the show or shop in the Next Round store. Stay connected by visiting nextroundlive.com. Nate Oates and Dan Hurley and Trash. In this segment, Precision Sports Medicine uh, brings us part of the show today. Precision Sports Medicine, they do a tremendous job making sure everybody stays healthy. 512-3885. Been like three or four times. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. Dr. Patterson, yeah. just the absolute best. I mean, look, the problem is, you know, even if you're young, something happens. These are the guys you want to see. But the older you get, you try to stay young. You're going to uh, have some mishaps. Body's going to break down, and these are the guys that will take care of you. PrecisionSportsOrtho.com slash 2024. Make 2024 a healthy year for you with Brookwood Baptist and Precision Sports Medicine. PrecisionSportsOrtho.com slash 2024. All right, Alabama, an 11.5 point underdog today. It's down from 12. Nate Oates, the Crimson Tide head coach out in Phoenix. Ask about having two plays. I mean, Alabama, probably the biggest deficit point spread they've faced this year was maybe an underdog by two, three points. At Tennessee, maybe yeah. six. Six. So, I mean, roughly double the biggest yeah. point spread they've had all year against them. And Nate Oates asked about that in Arizona. I mean, obviously nobody's picking you guys to win. Uh, you're a heavy underdog. How, how are you approaching this uh, with, with your group right now? I listen. We were we were an underdog. No, nobody expected us to be here. I mean, we 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 weren't playing our best basketball coming into the, the regular season. Now, part of that was we 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 weren't healthy. We haven't had uh, at the last time we had our, our full team healthy. We beat a really good A and M team, 100 to 75. So, you know, I, we had to sell our guys that we can make the run. You know, before the tournament. Now that we've made the run to get to the Final Four. You know, I want our guys playing loose and free, but I want them thinking we got a chance to win. I mean, I mean, if you guys know me, I'm not going to this game just happy to be here. Like, I mean, UConn's great. Danny's done a great job. I mean, there's, you know, as Danny said, they're they're bulletproof. But, they, you know, other teams have been up on them, going on runs. The, the problem is they just go on a huge run, as evidenced by the last game, 30 to zero, or and they make these enormous runs. So we're, we're going to show our guys success other teams have had. And the success that other teams have had, we, we also do those things very well. We just we just can't give them these big runs that everybody gives up. So a big underdog, Alabama, 11 and a half point now underdog. But as Nate Oates said, they were an underdog just to get here, and you overcame that. Yeah, I mean, I mean they were, really but the they thing. weren't. I mean, in their four games, they were favored in three of those games. I mean, the yeah. only time they were underdog was actually against North Carolina. So this is a completely different situation. But I do agree. I mean, although it seems like they're playing with house money, I think Alabama players believe they're going to beat UConn. So we've talked so much about the fact that 
UConn is the best team Alabama has faced, probably the best defense Alabama has faced. We looked at that on Ken Palm. One thing we haven't really pointed out, UConn has not faced an offense ranked as high as Alabama's on Ken where Palm. Is, where is Creighton compared to Alabama? It's uh, got to be kind of close. Uh, I'll, give you that. I'll give you that on the other okay. side, though, because I'm going to give you an interesting number. Here's Dan Hurley talking about the fact that Alabama's offense can present them some problems they haven't faced all year. Yeah, with what Alabama's shown in terms of what they're capable of to beat a number one seed in North Carolina, um, and just to, with how good their offense is, I mean, it's um, it, it'll be the best offense that we've guarded, uh, you know, this year. You know, it, 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 as good as Illinois was, this is better, um, just because I think they're you know they're, they're, they're deeper, just more athletics, you know, just more guards that can break you down. Um, and then look at the you know we, we've. You know, we, we've lost three games. I mean, we got, you know, we got crushed uh, at Creighton, and um, you know, at Seton Hall, we got we got our we got our butt kicked too. So if we're not on our identity, like we're we're vulnerable like everybody else. But um, you know, again, if we play elite offense, elite defense, and beat you on the backboard, it, we're we're tough to beat. Second best offense they have faced this year, Illinois, who they. <laughs> They just destroyed yep. it the other day. Illinois fourth in adjusted offense based on Ken Palm's rankings. Creighton, you asked, they are ninth. So this will be three top uh, ten offenses in Ken Illinois, Palm that they faced. And look, you got to give Klingon credit. Again, they were 0 of 19 when he actually contended shots. But Illinois played offensively one of the worst games. Well, it was the worst game they played the yeah. entire year. Adjusted defensive efficiency, UConn is fourth in the country. Um, and as we mentioned, the comparisons for Alabama, Tennessee is third, Auburn is fourth, North Carolina is eighth, Arizona is tenth. Alabama's played some tough teams. There's no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, but went back through, Auburn and Tennessee, this offense didn't have a lot of success. That's right. The thing we just haven't talked as much about, though, the best offense in the country, according to Ken Palm, is UConn. I mean, they're number one in the nation right now in adjusted offensive efficiency on Kempom. Well, and look, that takes into in account all the tournament games, obviously. Yeah, and I was also going to bring out, the, you know, again, teams are only scoring 53.5 points per game in four games, but their defense leads to a lot of easy baskets. Yeah, a now, that's a great point. Yeah, it's not necessarily just the offense they run. It's what their defense is. Right. All those points count the same, but I get what you're saying there. All right, it's time for Trash Rockstar. If you do not mind, please touch that button very lightly. Y'all usually start before 8 o'clock with a chainsaw? What time is it, sir? Well, it's after 8. Now you guys started firing it up at 755. <laughs> LT's Trash is presented by Mortgage Right. Mortgages done the right way. Hey, I don't know if the guy behind me died or not, but I have... I need to knock on wood. Not about him you don't dying, want him but... Dead. No, I don't, no. but... um. I've only heard leaf blowing once in like three or four weeks. Really? Yep. Somebody brought that up to me the other day. They're like, I love your show, but I got to take, you know, I love Lance, but I got to, you know, I like to keep my yard clean and this whole leaf blower thing. And I'm like, well, you know, I think they it's don't do it daily, do they? Yeah, that's what I said. I said, I think this guy does it daily for hours on end. Yeah, and no, and problem. it's, yeah, that was what I was going to say. Yeah. Not only is it daily, but it's like two or three hours yeah. each time. Yeah, he was wanting some clarification. Yeah, on look, I all, I get that. I mean, Rodrigo comes out every two weeks. Yeah. So I am guilty of having the leaves blown. I got, oh, uh, I got a leaf blower. Yeah. Uh, for Christmas. Yeah. Still in the box. I know that will shock yeah, you. Yeah, it's uh, stunning. Uh, you've got to, um, this time of year, if you got trees, those little, the pollen things that fall out, you got to keep those blown off because if it rains, they get sticky and yep. become like glue on your pavement. I think I probably have the award for ugliest yard right now. Do you really? Yeah, I'm sure we, we, we're an eyesore. We got oh. a big ass dead tree right in the front yard that yeah. needs to come down. But Do you all have an HOA? Uh, no. Oh, okay, well, then you won't get a letter in the mailbox a lot of it, you from, can get from eyes. an HOA. Yeah. You can get eyes. Yeah. So I think their demographic is probably 90% women, but I have never seen one episode of Grey's Anatomy. I have not either. So Grey's Anatomy has been renewed for a 21st season. And that's a heck of a run right there. Here is a list of things that aren't as old as Grey's Anatomy. Goes back to 2005. The iPhone, first generation launched 2007. Wow. Taylor Swift's music career, her first album released 2006. Spotify, I didn't realize it was this old, launched in 2008. Marvel Cinematic Universe, first film was Iron Man back in 2008. 
Netflix is a streaming service launched in 2007. Instagram launched 2010. Twitter founded 2006. Airbnbs founded in 2007. Didn't realize they went that far back. The Barack Obama presidency first sworn in 2009. And YouTube was only three months older than Grey's Anatomy. To be such a, there was a great meme. What's the girl's name that plays that's the head? This girl, Catherine Heigl. No, no. Oh. Ellen Pompeo yeah. or something. She's the one that's always threatening to leave. Like she's like the star. And like yeah. there's a picture. Of, <laughs> where are you gonna go? Uh, so, yeah. so there's a picture of her on in the cast where she's just like looking down. It's like it looks. It's somebody meme that looks like they just told her they gave her a 21st season. Like she's wanted out <laughs> yeah, so many she times, be done. and they just throw money at her. So like, is she the only like big name that has stuck around the whole time. I have never seen an episode. I haven't either, but I, Catherine Heigl's not on there anymore, right? No. Is and Sandra Dempsey's O on there? I don't think there. Sandra O is, and Patrick Dempsey isn't either. I don't think. Now, again, I never watched this show, but I think she's the only big-name cast member. I mean, how much there. mischief can go on in this hospital? I mean, it really is crazy they've kept up with that many storylines. Then I mean, if they pulled a Fleetwood Mac, if they switched up with everybody? Well, I would have, I have to imagine. I have never seen one minute of one episode. But I think I can figure out what keeps people coming back rock stars not for them saving lives right a little bit of drama yeah okay how many love stories how many guys or girls do you guys know that are on ozempic you know i hear that occasionally oh, i think a lot of people are on it but don't admit it my uh yeah, i've just been exercising a lot like i know somebody really really close to me that's lost 71 pounds as of this past weekend when i saw him on ozempic yeah well you don't eat i mean like if if you, like, it was when I got my tonsils out, like, I didn't have any desire. I really couldn't eat. So I lost 19 pounds in three days. I, uh, my college age daughter said it is becoming a epidemic of oh, yeah. the college girls that are going on it that are otherwise actually very, very skinny and they just have this image issue. Uh, but yeah. also, it, when it gets released, it has it been released in pill form yet? I, I still, could not still, tell you. I, shot you I know as right. much about Grey's Anatomy as I know about it. Okay, well, this viral weight loss breakfast dubbed the Oat Zimic has exploded in popularity on TikTok after users claimed it can help you lose 40 pounds in eight weeks. What's Oat that? Zimic's <laughs> name is a combination of oats and the drug Ozempic, a medication which made headlines recently as celebrities such as Oprah have credited it with helping them lose weight e- easily. There has got to be something on the back end of this, though, right? Uh, the, oh, I bet you don't leave the toilet. No, but well, I'm no, talking about I, like long-term like, health concerns. It is with a diabetic was thing for diabetics. They found that well, this also curbs your appetite, and so they turned it into a weight loss drug. But also, it's kind of like the Rogaine thing. You got to keep taking it. Once you're done, you're gonna blow up. Yeah. So this still includes Ozempic, though. It's not just this. No, syrup. I think this is just. A, I don't know if this includes Ozempic. Yeah, there is There's, no Ozempic medication okay. in the smoothie. All you need is one cup of water, half cup of uncooked uh, oatmeal, and lime juice combined in a blender oh, to make God, the drink, that awful. which is claim to have ozempic like effects now jessica cording she's a registered dietitian has said there's nothing extraordinary about the oat zempic you can achieve the same results by simply eating oatmeal for breakfast uh she went on to say oatmeal is high in uh, fiber and forms a gel-like substance in your stomach which helps you feel full and less likely to eat anything else for breakfast also that's a myth if you put it in your baby's bottle for him to sleep longer not true have you tried them all yeah have you tried Benadryl? No, I did. I did. Hear <laughs> no, day, I tell you. A daycare got in trouble. I don't know if it was here. Was it here yeah. in Alabama that uh, they found out they were giving the kids melatonin for nap time? Oh, wow. Yeah. Without the parents knowing? Just gummy. Oh, yeah. No, it's so I was, <laughs> got a little melatonin. I, I've busted out melatonin for uh, oh, Chili and it. Bullet. Yeah. And Chili, that whore is in the uh, vet right <laughs> now. <laughs> Chili ate the bottle. She well, ate I was telling him, you know, she ate the half pan of the banana nut rum bread and ate that foil. And now she continues to throw up six days later. So... Oh, Dr. Rab's got her back there doing when X-rays. Lance, surgery like, is a possibility. Surgery is a possibility. When Lance told me she ate foil, I thought she ate some some of the tin foil. Yeah. He's like, no, it's the foil pan, that yeah. thick foil pan. You need to, like, when she's out of her kit, you need to have a muzzle on her at all times. That's what well, I told Maddie, I said, get bullet, get in the car. I'm going to block Rab's number <laughs> and just take off. <laughs> Leave the dog yeah. and block the number. Take the cannoli. I guess you got pictures of this next one. Playboy model, Gianna Prazier's. Defended her outfit to Disney, which many thought was, quote, inappropriate. Now, the beauty shared snaps of her look on Instagram, which she boasts more than 60,000 followers. But many criticized the uh, the outfit and claimed it was a little too much. Which one? Uh, the left is what she went out with. And I think okay. the right is the dinner outfit. But left is 
Has I, she had surgery, Rockstar? No, she's very natural, and I think she probably manipulated the photo a little bit to really? pull this out a bit. Yeah. I did think this was going to be much worse. Yeah, but yeah. it's just, uh, it, this is attention. This it just looks like, absurd. Oh, it is. It's, it's just I mean, absurd. Like, but how many girls right now are heads. wearing leggings in Disney? But the quote, well, a lot, but. But the quote is, "My, I feel better in my body when I have tight clothes on. That's her quote. It's just like, uh, that. I well, just feel more comfortable with tight fitting clothes like but she edits these photos to the point where the perspectives are all off like look how long her legs are in that red yeah. thing i mean her legs aren't that long well, those she, are a natural that's a natural rack right yeah, yeah, yeah that's what tell. i say she's had surgery you can tell about the presentation or two yeah so one uh influencer said no just a parent quote as a parent i feel uncomfortable seeing influencers wear such revealing clothes at disney uh went on to say i want my children to enjoy the experience and Rockstar's right, says she feels confident wearing really, really tight things. But you say that right now that it's not that bad, but you're at Disney and you see that. Yeah. Just think about that. Like, like I mean, that, I'm not going to get wound up know, about you it. You know but... you're going to stare there going, oh, my God, look at that woman. Yeah. I'd be more focused on how banged up her lips are. Like, well, I think she's had a lot of lip injections. She's chewing oh, yeah. on a curling iron. Yeah. Okay, so these are, and I'm sure we've got picks, uh, the grossest dishes around the world. So if you haven't eaten lunch yet, you might not want to listen to this. How many are there, Rocky? There are six. So you got photos of all six? Do you want to guess what this is uh, when he shows you the okay, photo? Okay, we can do that, and then I say we all pick one that I, I've got to eat it to live. I will eat it. Okay. All right. The first one is Basintang. It's out of South Korea. Do you want to guess what is in this uh, stew? It looks like a lot of curry, and I am going to say that is a raven. That's a lot of meat for a raven. Oh, several ravens. Raven. Uh, <laughs> this is stew made... With dog meat. Yikes. I've heard the rumors. Okay. I never want to go to a country true. where they actually eat dog. Yeah, I'm going to stir away from that too. Does it, would it matter the breed to you? If I had to eat dog? Yeah, like does it matter like, like this is a Pyrenees? Do you think an adoption tastes like hot dogs? I don't know. But I'm just saying like it would like, oh, I'll do that. I'm not going to eat husky. I yeah, can't, I can't yeah, eat it's husky. It's going to be real gamey. Yeah, so, I would yeah. think like a St. Bernard would be too too fatty. Yeah, I would I have to know. think like the Labrador retrievers like hamburger. You uh, get this anywhere. is not going to be on my list to survive though. Next one. Okay. This is from I Argentina. Not dog. All right. Um, that looks like like veal or something like that but this is too i like that they just got a normal salad with it salad. i'm yes. all about the side salad yeah. okay a well, tomato for me uh, what, what is that grilled cow udder that's a no for I, me too i bl- utter yep i've never had udder i've had cow intestine i think that is called tripe I mean, Have this you ever is heard of that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. tripe. I've had tripe. This is going to be one of my top two or three. Okay, based I'm, on where we're going. As here. of now, that's the leader. I'm going to eat that. That's ubre asada. Yeah, which is grilled cow. Boy, butter. utter seems chewy to me. Doesn't it? Oh, you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and milky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one's from Japan. Um, that looks like snails, but it's got to be something crazier than snails. Magura no mandama yeah. is the dish. It is cooked tuna eyeballs. We cooked them. I don't want those raw. That's cooked for sure. in quotes. And they're still looking at you. Yeah, that's that's. There's always been something about eyeballs, whether it's on a creature or a human. Yeah. Just that 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 sound when it gets in that. Uh, right when you pop it with your teeth. Yeah, I'm still gonna go with cow udder. That's the leader in the clubhouse. Next one is Alaskan. Okay, we're back in the United States. This looks like whale stomach. It's very close. It's muktuk. Okay. It's frozen well skin and blubber. This is probably going to be my leader right now. Yeah, I'm going to do that before I do cow udder. And I really hope that sauce in the background has got a really good... Well, we're, going, in, or, uh, we're going heavy in that sauce, sauce trust yeah. me. Uh, okay. The next one's from Sweden. Okay. Um, it's surstroming is the name of the dish. Uh, that looks like they just basically pulled a fish out, whacked its tail off, and dropped it in the bowl. Yeah, this is definitely a no for me. This is putrid canned fermented herring now is that supposed to smell awful is that fermented herring no that's as putrid yeah it's supposed to be awful yeah Yeah. Yeah. does that help sell it if that's on the (laughs) can oh wait a minute that's putrid i don't know how they crave it i am going to stick with the uh well we got one more okay final one's from the philippines baloop bloop Balut. Uh, that is just a bird's egg that they're cracking open and eating the bird out of. It, it is appears. a cooked duck embryo. Yeah, hard pass. Yeah, I'm going for the uh, frozen yeah. whale skin and blubber. Frozen whale skin and blubber. The then the other would be number two the for me. Like it was at least flat. Yeah, I think udder's number two. Well, it's deep fried too. That so. might be the worst. Yeah, could you imagine eating? I mean, how, where do you start? Too. Well, look, you can tell this dude's banged up with that. Look at that thumbnail. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he had cut his down a while. 
That is trash presented by Mortgage Right. Buying a home, major milestone of life, getting it right comes down to the right advice at the right time. That's why we're proud to partner with our friends at Mortgage Right who do mortgages the right way. Call 205 815 9200. You can apply online, mortgageright.com slash TNR. NMLS 2239 equal housing. Linda. A lot of people are saying tripe is cow's stomach, which is what I ate. I, yes. Stomach. Okay. So I've had that. I've the had cow's stomach. are next to the stomach. They are. I mean, I think it's pretty much one and the same, but cow's stomach is what I ate was uh, tripe. Hey, uh, don't forget, Little T and Dunaway, you'll see the coverage at Next Round Live and here on all of our uh, video platforms. I do know, I think it's tomorrow night. Is it tomorrow night they're going to? No, that's game night. So I guess tonight they're going to Barkley's Redmont party, right? So we'll have some content from uh, the Round Mound to Rebound. Yeah, it could be Sunday night, though. Okay, whenever I, it is. I think it is tonight. Yeah, yeah so we should... Uh, should be getting uh, maybe a sit down with Bart. That's right. We'll so see. Red My Vodka is hosting them at the party, and we appreciate that. Yeah, look, available right now in 22 states, including Arizona and right here in Alabama. Um, if you're at a local bar or restaurant, ask for it by name. If they don't have it, tell them to get it locally owned and operated. It is Red My Vodka, eight times distilled, gluten free. Pick up a bottle this weekend. Rockstar hits the lounge with what he called a surprise special, something like that. It's got meaning for him. It is next. Everything Next Round is on demand now in the podcast section at nextroundlive.com. It's that time of year. Hoops, hops, and wings with our friends at Walk-Ons. We're talking about the unbelievable madness of the best viewing and the best food in town. This tournament season, try any of the three local walk-ons in Trustville, Stadium Trace in Hoover, and also the Greystone location. A wonderful menu with original food, great drinks, but most importantly in tournament season, TV's everywhere, so you can keep up with how your bracket's burning. Your home for all the tournament action is Walk-On Sports Bistro. The road to the Indy 500 runs through Birmingham, April 26th through 28th. The fastest IndyCar drivers in the world, Castro Nevis, Dixon, and Newgarden will put their skills to the test with one goal in mind, victory. Witness country music superstar Riley Green as Grand Marshal give the most iconic command in racing. Start your engine! Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix powered by Amherst at the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. Get yours now. Fire damage to your home or business is something you never want to consider. Ryan Brown here from the next round. But in the horrible event it happens, Dry Tech is here to help. They respond quickly and will reply to you within 20 minutes when you call 205-637-0143. They're working for you, the customer, not the insurance company. They've got five crews ready to go 24-7. Don't call the insurance company first. Call Dry Tech. Just remember this website, mydrytech.com. That is mydrytech.com. Hey, you. Days warming up. Looking like spring. And in New Balance Birmingham, we've got the thing. What pops and what's fresh? Check the selects. Come together at New Balance Birmingham on Highway 280, right next to Chick-fil-A. New Balance Birmingham. We got now. NASCAR is returning to Talladega Super Speedway for the 2024 GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th through Sunday, April 21. Guarantee your 2024 GEICO 500 weekend experience today by visiting talladegasuperspeedway.com or calling 877-GO-TO-DEGA. Enhance your race weekend by adding passes to the Talladega Garage Experience presented by Cool Ray. It is the GEICO 500 weekend, Saturday, April 20th and Sunday, April 21st. Guarantee your spot now, talladegasuperspeedway.com or 877-GO-TO-DEGA. The wait is over. Tonali has arrived. Beautifully distinctive Italian styling and performance. Come test drive the all-new 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali plug-in hybrid at Alfa Romeo of Birmingham. The all-new Tonali offers best-in-class horsepower and torque. Fastest 0 to 60 times in its class. Plus best-in-class range with full electric charge. And best of all, qualified Tonali leasees are eligible for up to $7,500 EV tax credit factored into your lease. Hurry down to Alfa Romeo of Birmingham and experience the all-new Tonali. Rockstar, gear it up. You tuning your guitar there, Rocky? With this tuning this guitar, we're good though. Keep going. Okay. Is it all? Is it live right now? <laughs> it is. Oh, you tuned it. That's all good, man. Yeah. This is like the uh, sound check, Rockstar in uh, the lounge. In just a moment. Lock today, lock every day. Presented by Hemp Hill Services. Hemp Hill Services brings you the lock every single day. 
any of that is the number you need to call. Uh, whether you experience plumbing, heating, or cooling issues in your home or business, they are ready to serve you. Hard to stop a train. Call the guys, Adam, Chad, Andrew. Tell them the next round sent you. For more information, HempBillServices.com. A lot going up uh, right now. Got some basketball. Got some Major League Baseball. Uh, how, how, how tough has Major League Baseball been early on? Is it is it going is it kind of been difficult uh, it's going to predict? okay. You know, going we had okay? uh, Detroit early yesterday. Yeah. Ended up splitting a Major League Baseball yesterday, one and one. Yeah. Um, just kind of filling it out. A lot of big numbers out there. There's some really bad baseball teams this year. You know, year. that was interesting. When we were driving to Auburn the other day, Forrester was like, Lance, if if uh, the other side of the White Sox game is not your lock every day, you're not doing it right. And then you what mean, happened? And then, then they beat the Braves. Scott yeah. talked him right into a win over the Braves. Well, it's what you got to worry about. You know, yeah. in a three-game or a four, even a four-game set, like if you play these big favorites and they lose one of those games, you've you just, lost the series. You just kind of washed yeah 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 you've got to basically still have them get swept just to make money on that right, right. uh the well, white we have uh three major league plays up tonight three in the nba uh, the white sox the are NBA. a threat to get swept though at uh, any point all right it is time to go into the lounge rockstar uh tuning this guitar right up here i you've had tr- issues with this gar- guitar what's going on here tuned it down half a step yeah. and uh that is the problem it never stays in tune so we'll just kind of i'll kind of just uh you're gonna half, ass, it? half ass the guitar. All right. Uh, our Rockstar in the Lounge each week is presented by our friends at the Floribama. Floribama, always something fun happening at the Floribama, and we are just weeks away from the mullet toss, which I guess there's still an outside possibility we're going to be there, but you can go to floribama.com slash daily slash events, and they will tell you exactly what is going on. I mean, they've got everything from the bingo. You talked about worship on the water, which I've actually walked into that service before. Uh, they've got ladies night. Of course, there's music on all of those great stages tonight. Uh, stop in. Check them out. It is the best dive bar in the world. It is the Floribama. SS, once again, requesting Nutshell by Alice in Chains, which Tyler seconds. I don't assume that's on the uh, Oh, I could do. I'll do Nutshell if you want me to. Was, no, no, that's no, no. One of my favorite songs. You, want it to do. Well, you do Nutshell song. once this summer for oh, him? Oh, yeah. Okay. Nutshell's a beautiful song. All right. Every Friday, Rockstar is in the lounge. So at some point, SS, you're going to get Nutshell, and Tyler, you're going to get Nutshell uh, by Alice in Chains. But Rockstar had something special in his mind today. I don't know what's going on. Well, because it's 30-year anniversary of Kurt Cobain's death. Um, oh, this is going to be a tearjerker. No, it's going to be a tearjerker. But it's just the, what he did for me, I was never a huge Nirvana fan. I was a, a, The Unplugged album actually made me more of a Nirvana fan and changed me because I wanted to play guitar I play guitar and my ass could not sing and play at the same time it was impossible really? i would strum and try to to the point where i'd throw the guitar down like i was probably seventh or eighth grade and i quit for about a year maybe more than that like I just, playing the guitar because i couldn't do it like it yeah. just pissed me off so much that i could not it just and then one so day it's literally not chewing gum and walking uh, no it's not well for some reason it was just something it just has to click and i remember i looked up the tab to about a girl uh the nirvana song and I started playing it, and then I just tried it one night, and I got it. For some reason, that song finally clicked with me where I could play it and say, I'm not doing that today. I'm not a big fan of that song. But that was the song, like the first song that I ever got to sing and play at the same time in my bedroom alone. I was like so excited that it finally, from that point on, I could play. So Nirvana, I'd listen to the cassette tape. I had the unplugged on a little little, little boombox in my bedroom. In seventh and eighth grade, I would listen to that ad nauseum. So in celebration of that. This is such a good song, unplugged wise. I do not like the recorded version as much on uh, in utero. This is Penny Royal T. All right, from Nirvana unplugged. Rockstar in the lounge with a little Nirvana. I'm on my time with everyone. I have. Very bad posture. Got you, my guitar. You can't. With, I with, can't do it with that. I'm not sorry. That's like it's too distracting. I could not tell. I don't know if that's a surprise to you that I could tell. Um, it's brought to you by the famous Floribama Lounge. Yes, yes they tune Getting in for ready you. for a little mullet mm-hmm. toss coming up. In How the next long is this weeks. song? Because Live music on all those stages tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. <laughs> we now have four minutes. We're fine. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to make... All right. I think you've got it off now, though. Okay, turn it back off. Yeah, I turned it down. All right, all right here we go. Pity Royalty. All right. I'm on my time with everyone. I have very bad posture. 
lost you I sit and drink penny royal tea still the life inside of me I sit and drink penny royal tea Give me Leonard Corn afterward So I can sigh eternally I'm so tired I can't sleep I'm anemic royalty Laxatives, cherry flavored antacid. I sit and drink penny royal tea, distill the life inside of me. I sit and drink penny royal tea. I like the end. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Nirvana's tough, that was, man. I'll be honest, I was a little shaky early on. <laughs> oh, oh, it's because of the guitar. It threw yeah. me off. So, sorry, Kurt, if you're listening. My bad, buddy. <laughs> At least it was concerns, I am sure. Yeah, typical. Happy anniversary, man. <laughs> it's Rockstar in the Lounge, presented by Florabama. Go to their website to see more. Florabama.com. All right, everybody, enjoy the final four. We'll be with you tomorrow. You can catch us live at 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock as we talk Alabama and UConn. Enjoy the tournament. We'll see you Monday right here on the next round.